Welcome to the Talk and Chatter Experience powered by Gasoline Alley, Harley Davidson. Today's guest is two times Australian Superbike champion and AMA Supermoto champion, Troy Herfoss. Welcome, mate. Thanks for having me, mate. No worries, mate. Well, I nailed that one. I, I was a bit um, bit nervous to, to try and get the uh, intro out, but we nailed it. <laughs> Who's Troy Herfoss? Uh, just a kid from Goulburn. Or See, an old bloke now, but just a... Still feels like a kid, though. Guy from Goulburn that loves riding a motorbike. So you, you grew up in Goulburn and obviously you've done the move up to the Goldie now. Yeah. How, how did it all happen? Where'd you start with? Oh, I, I just, I was born into a, a family of motorbike riding. Dad dad loves motorbikes and yep. yeah, I was I was six weeks old and I'd already been to four dirt track races, I think. And, oh, um, serious? Yeah. And we didn't have any land when I was a kid. So I just uh, had, a, had a bike and we'd sort of go out to friends' places. Then when I was about 11, dad bought couple of acres outside of Goulburn near Wakefield and um yeah I just rode bikes every day after school pretty much yeah right so when did you start your actually racing side of it uh I, I did a couple of um like support events and club events when I was a kid but yep. when I was nine ten years old um dad decided um he'd take me around for the year and we'd done the state championships and the Australian championships for dirt track mm. they were in Canberra that year so um it wasn't too far to go and yeah, I was on an 84 model YZ80 in 1996 and wow. qualified for the final my first time. And, and um, I think there was all Hondas on the grid and, and my old Yamaha. And, an 84 YZ. Yeah, and the thing was a bit of a weapon actually. And yeah, and from then we just, we both loved it. Dad yeah. bought me a set of leathers on the day because my kit didn't didn't go through scrutineering. And yeah, we were pretty green to it all. And um, my dad had a lot of experience and was a, he was a national dirt track champion, long track and dirt track. Yep. Um, classic bikes and stuff like that. So he was a handy rider, but yeah, just rode around the bush really when I was a kid. Yeah, right. So your dad, it's Mark, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, he won yeah long track titles. Yeah. And normal dirt track, full Aussie titles, eh? Hey, yeah. Well. So he's yeah. he's claimed the fame was, or I, in my opinion, he, he won the Bathurst long track Australian title in '91, right. beat Daryl Beatty on a CR500. Nice. And and I never won an Australian long track title, and and um he definitely we were two different riders really. He's. I was, I'm sort of smooth as silk on the dirt and he's he's one of the blokes that gets out on the fence and holds the thing wide open. Yeah, and that Bathurst long track is a track to remember too. Yeah. I don't think they do it there anymore. I think nah. it's stopped now, but that was a crazy place to be. Yeah, one of the most prestigious long tracks, yeah. I think. 100%, yeah. It was one of the ones that um, everyone wanted there was that and uh, Blaney. Yeah. Those were sort of the two that people sort of wanted to have. Yeah, they were fast. that was a fast track too, fast tracks. So, so you went on the YZ. How long did you keep that YZ for? So I rode it that year and then in 98... Um, yeah, dad, dad got me a, a new bike. Yeah. So. And what was that? Uh, the local Kawasaki shop, Bill Burke from Golden Kawasaki. He, yep. Him and um, a guy named Michael McGeekin had the painting shop in Goulburn. Dad was doing some work at his house and, and he want, they wanted to help out and, and um, they, they'd done a deal somewhere, the three of them, and dad and, yep. and them two lads got me on a brand new bike and, yeah. The KX? KX? Yeah, 98 model. 125 or, or no, 80, 80 still at that yeah. point? So yep. I was 11, I think, yeah. Yep. Got my first new bike and we done the, done the whole year. Dad got me a, a downpipe for it and I was a dirt tracker then. They're a cool bike, eh? Yeah. It was a good area of racing too. So how long did you stay at the 84? So 11, I guess it's two years, isn't it, I think? Yeah, yeah. I actually done – I was pretty small lad. And, yep. and when I turned 13, yeah, Dad was busy, busy with work and stuff and we didn't actually do a lot of riding. Yep. I think I borrowed a I borrowed a CR 125 actually, and I'd done and I'd never ridden a 125, and done a couple of the runs down the back street. And so you got your practice in. Yeah, <laughs> guy Trevor Marsh. He, he maybe you, you might know him. He was a great dirt tracker, uh, Brock Park sort of era. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, he had a 01 CR 125. I'd never ridden a Honda, and I always you know being a dirt tracker, yep. all the fast guys run Hondas usually. That's correct. Yeah. And um, yeah, rocked up at Blaney and won the long track on my first time. On the one two five. Yeah, it wasn't a total meeting, but there was a lot of fast kids there. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, so I'd done that year just riding at home really. But then when I was fourteen, I was sort of grown enough to to um to get a one two five. And it's funny we we decided then we we'd had the YZ, we had a KX eighty, and we decided look the next bike we get it's got to be like a ninety six model CR one two five. That that was the go. That was the fast one. That was in O two. Yep. But that was still the go. All my all my main competitors had them. Yep. We had one lined up uh, at a good price, and um, yeah, the local Suzuki shop, the Golden Power Centre, gave Dad a cracking deal on a RM one two five. 
Oh, really? And so we, we bought it. It was, it was a good bike too. But So what's uh, it, what year is this? This is 0... Yeah, that was an 01 125. 125, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and right. It was a decent bike. Yeah. Um, but then we end up... Um, when I went senior, I ended up on a YZ125 and a, a YZ250 and a KX500. So I still hadn't ridden a Honda yet. Wow, that's and a long I, time. Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't until... Um, yeah, my first bike I bought myself... Um, yeah, it was a Sarah 450 2004 model. Yeah, right. I was 16 then, and um, did so one, did one meet on, and it got stolen. You're kidding? Yeah, yeah. Where from? From a racetrack or at, from the, at the AOS in Canberra? Uh, dirt track had a at the Institute of Sport. Yeah, it was out out the back in in the car park, and yeah, my mate had his bike in there with um, Supermoto set up, mm. and my bike there with the I'd borrowed a gold back wheel, which yep. doesn't mean much, but. That's the only reason we got it back in the end. So, yeah, they, oh, you did. they stole the bike and then um, 15 months later, Dad was going to find this bike right or wrong. He'd been going <laughs> through shops in Canberra and yep. he was actually flagging in Canberra at yep. a dirt track event and a guy had left and he drove past a – this is no word of a lie – he drove past a servo yeah. and he sees um, – I got T-boned at the last race I'd done and had a few little marks in the seat where yep. he ripped and he's seen that and he's seen a gold wheel and he said, oh, it's, it's not often you see a – yeah. An eighteen-inch back wheel, especially a gold one. Mm. He rang Dad. Dad left the track straight away, uh, while the old mate bailed him up. And um, and unfortunately, the only only place Dad went wrong is he he um, I don't know if he gruffed the old mate up, but he got the bike off his ute and yep. put it in his car, and then he called the cops. Yeah. And um, the dirty bugger got away with it because he wasn't in possession. So oh, we ended up getting taking the, it back. We ended up getting the bike back, and yeah. Had it had it had much uh, hours on it? Do you reckon? Since? Yeah, yeah. It, it hadn't. So I'd, I'd sent it away and had some work done to it and it was it was a bit of a weapon and, yep. he, and he must have tried to start it and he kicked back and broke the casing. And ah. It had a bit of – yeah, it needed a bit of work but we, we actually got it going and, and flogged it off and so Dad felt felt bad for me after he'd, he'd sent me on my way and said, right, you got to buy your stuff from now on and yep. that was my first bike and then – Then he gets flogged. Yeah, he, he loved he loved coming to races with me so as soon as he got flogged, he, he got me on another one. So did you get another away. CRF? Yeah, we bought the exact same bike actually, yep. yeah. They're, they're a good era of, yeah. of the CRF too, like the start of them, weren't they? Yeah, that thing was – it was. It felt like it had traction control. Getting off the two strokes, yep. um, it was so easy to ride. So you went from basically doing like all powers and 450s on a 500. Yeah, as soon that. as I went from junior, yep. I was – dad had a 650 Husseberg, yep. so I rode that. And then, um, yeah, a guy named Tom White from Cowra, he had a couple of really fast bikes and, and was keen on being at the races but starting a small business, he didn't want to – be hurting himself so yep. yeah i uh, his two bikes were weapons i actually won my first australian title on his bikes yeah so, right yeah and that was a senior you didn't get a junior aussie title no, did you no i no. got a few seconds i had yeah too many fast guys with with me i had i was sort of my age group i always had josh waters yep. he's he was always the fast guy and then every two years i'd i'd have to race or i'd have to be on the same track as casey stoner i never uh. got to race him much but Yep. Um, so he he was a bit older, but um, yeah, it was a good era. And then above that, like um, Brock Parks, like yeah. between Parksy, um, Casey Stone, I guess you got to put Josh in there as well. He got them guys just won hundreds of titles. They won everything. Yeah, yeah. in every state. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, so yeah. you couldn't you couldn't sort of escape them, I guess, at that point. No. Nah. So what, like, what are you? Thirty three. Yeah, thirty three. So yeah, Casey's around. Yeah, he must he, be 34 or something just, as well. I think he's a year and a bit older than yep. me. So, yeah. Wow, what a time, hey. With, yeah. with, your, with your riding down there, what did you have mostly? Was it deco or did you have some oil track stuff? Or you were saying uh, about the 18s and stuff. What, yeah, so have? when I had started racing, Canberra was still oil. Mm -hmm. But um, once I went to 125, it was granite. So I never had a lot of oil tracks. Yep. But I just really – I got on with the oil tracks really well. Yep. The first time I went to Kempsey was my first oil track. Oh, yeah, away yep. from Canberra, like a state championship, and um, I think I was more competitive then. Yeah, Josh, Josh was extremely impressive on granite. Mm. Like as a kid, probably you nearly say he, he probably should have went um, speedway. Not that he, he made a bad decision. He's an extremely good yeah. road racer, but he was um, he could just get around a granite track real good. And mm. I, I was okay, but um, yeah, it wasn't until I got older I sort of picked up. Um, Probably when I got on the bikes with a heap of power, I, I found it a lot easier. On the granite? On the granite, yeah. Because you're road racing now, like, and we'll touch on the Fireblade a bit as we go, but um, the corner speed and this, like, it, your oil track background, 
there's got to be a big part of that too, like riding in that as well, hey? I reckon so. And yeah. it's funny, once I rode Supermoto, mm. um, I was so much better on the oil. Oh, so, really? So when I went, I hadn't ridden oil for years and years. And yeah. when I went to the Ballast Classic, I hadn't even ridden a bike in 16 months. But on the weekend before, we went out to Forbes and, and um, Draney gave me a go on his bike, um, the lad that let me ride his bike. And and I rolled out of pit lane onto the oil and it, it just felt like I was, I'd never been off the bike. But back home. Yeah. Because we'll, we'll get to there now because you basically retired, eh? Yeah. I, yeah. I even said... I didn't say it publicly, but like I'd said to my mates and I thought, I just didn't have any, when I stopped right riding, I thought, I just don't want to yeah. race. I just don't. Because you come back from Europe, hey? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. It was Europe and then it was just, I'm stopped. Yeah. I yeah. come back and I had a had a ride lined up in the championship I'd been riding in in Germany and yeah, a few things happened that I just didn't, yeah, morally I didn't, didn't like it. Yeah. And, um, and I was sitting there and I thought... You're just so easy, easily replaced, and I sort of always said to myself, if I wasn't a pro when I got to 25, and um, I'd probably think about going mm. and, and just riding as a hobby. And I'd sort of been doing well up until that previous year, and then that year I'd taken a ride that was for free, and um, you know I was supposed to make some money from winning races, and yeah, I didn't get paid, and then I got sacked, and I just the bank, I just had no money, and I could have made it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and everyone's got that story, so I, I, it's not not a not a poor me story, but I just thought, you know what, it's actually pretty yeah. good being at home, um, yeah, having a job that the money goes in the account every Thursday every afternoon, week. and <laughs> yeah, but it didn't take long to, you know, yeah. log on to the internet and look at the results, and you start telling your your friends, oh, I could I could be doing that, and because that was IDM, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It was a good championship. It was great at the time. It yep. was um It, it was, was very strong, wasn't it? Yeah. So there was open electronics and open tires. So you had you had Mitchell and Dunlop and Pirelli yep. all doing a lot of the development stuff in there and the electronics and the bikes were insane. The bike was incredible to ride. It was a lot of fun. What were you on over there? I was on a BMW. S thousand. Yeah. And it was just before the next year I was gonna be riding the HP four, the which they just oh, released at the time. Yep. But the bike I had was a lot of fun to ride. Like um it was fast, it had good electronics and, um, mm. yeah. I actually had my first taste of a Honda Superbike that year. So I, What, over there? Yeah, once I got um, moved on from the team I was in, yep. um, uh, Carl Muggeridge was riding Honda. Yep. And he was he was so good to me. He, Carl um, was? Yeah. He was a very friendly guy and he was the end of his career and he was always happy to help and but a fierce competitor too. He's... He's on an underpa- underpowered bike compared to us, I think, and yep. he was always jamming up the inside of me. And but yeah, when I, I actually stayed at his house the night I got um, sent from the team, oh, wow. and um, yeah, they their rider was sick or injured, um, and I I got the call up, and it was actually Carl's last ever event um, at Hockenheim, and he got chickenpox. He looked like death. Serious? And he could barely ride, and then I rolled out of pit lane, never seen the track, and. Down, went down to the first hairpin and the guy behind me tucked the front on a cold tyre and wiped my ankle out and I spent the night in hospital. So I, I rolled out of pit lane on a bike I'd never seen before for qualifying yeah. on a track I'd never seen before. And um, Yeah, that was that was all th- I was thinking, geez, what am I doing here? And got to ride the old Hockenheim yeah. circuit. It was a great track. I it did, was? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Because that's the one that goes through the um, the forest, isn't it? Uh, no, so we we done the short track. So okay, we, yep. we, we just done the, basically the stadium area. I can't yep. remember what the lap time was, but it was... Just a general size GP track, really. Because it's a beautiful, like even the GP track, and that's a beautiful track, isn't it? Oh, it's great. Yeah, I went for a look around it, and yeah, yeah, scary place. That and Nurburgring, geez. I'd, so you got to ride that? Yeah, I rode Nurburgring a couple yeah. of times, and the full. No, I took a took my rental car around the full Did one, you? thirty or forty euro, and you just go for it. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Except for I was in a Peugeot one hundred and three, and it. Yeah, it's not the. Done uh, its best to get to one hundred and twenty. I think you're probably better off in your van now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so. Well, we'll rewind a bit back from there, but yeah, as you start touching on the IDM stuff, I was really interested to you know talk about talk about that, and we'll, we'll come back to that as well. So, um, so you got into a senior CRF four hundred and fifty. Did yeah. it start to click like as a senior more? Did yeah, I yeah. I like honestly, when I was a kid, we we um, never we we took it very seriously. I, yep. We always raced hard and stuff, but like the budget wasn't massive, and the bikes weren't always the fastest bikes. Yeah. Um, I d- yeah, Dad's a great mechanic and always have reliable bikes. Yeah, um, I had opportunities to win. Don't get me wrong. I um, but yeah, once I turned senior, it just I had a good bike and um, and I don't know. I just liked the bigger bikes and yeah, I think I was just a late bloomer. Yeah, like, right. Um, 
I just uh, everything clicked. So the first year, really as a senior, I started winning. So what was your Aussie title? Uh, so I won Where two fifty, four fifty, and third on the five hundred at um, Kempsey. Kempsey Aussie, yeah. So I bloody the final was a cracker on the five hundred, but the two guys that beat me were just we were all good enough to win. I reckon. Yep. We'd done a bit of winning as the weekend has gone on, and yeah, Ken Bisley got the start, and Darren yep. Herrick on his wheel, and wow. two guys with just so much pedigree and experience. Yeah. And I just couldn't find a way past. And and at, at the time, I'm thinking, I think Parksy had done it. He'd won. Because he was a Kempsey local too, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, Parksy was, well, I don't know where Parksy was from, but he'd won the 125, 250 and 500. Yeah. And no one else had really done that. And um, and sort of once I went to four strokes, they were sort of the three classes. Yep. And um, yeah, but I, I couldn't quite get, couldn't find a way past them guys in the final of the 500. Yeah. Kempsey the around there was fast, though. Yeah, that was, he was Good at everywhere on the world, but that track especially yep. was real quick. Hard to beat there. Yeah. So, and just seeing all the 500s. Yeah. Like Line up on the final. I remember because like we talked about before we started yep. here, like we're both massive, massive fans of, of dirt track. Yep. And them guys are guys that I'd been watching for a long time. Like yep. I was racing against guys in there that, you know, I'd been watching for years and, and the whole final, you, you're rolling up the start line, there's smoke everywhere. You can just smell methanol and yep. you click the thing into about fourth gear on the start because it's got that much horsepower. <laughs> And um, it yeah. just, it's just so intense, isn't it? It is, it's mate. Two yeah. minutes of it, nothing really compares to it. I don't think so. And a place like Kempsey, you just constantly, you constantly go. Yeah. Like the straight at Kempsey is not a straight. No. Like you constantly turn. Like it is, it is a fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very underrated sport, especially oh, yeah. in Australia. Yeah. You know, so. And even like I'm big on fitness and stuff like that. And, and dirt track, the intensity and the yep. level, the level of intensity for that two and a half minutes. Yeah is something I don't experience anywhere else. Is that right? Yeah, it's just like you, you're pretty much hanging – at Kempsey, you're hanging on for dear life. Yeah. Especially on something like, yeah. like a 500 or something like that. It's Yeah. I, and it's scalable, I guess, because it depends on age. Like you go back to riding – thinking about an 80, you probably were just holding on just as tight yeah, as, a, right, as a junior yeah. as well. But yeah. you just, I don't know, riding a 500 or 252 stroke, it just still – Yeah. I don't know, something about it. Yeah, that's right. But like I was 16, 17 years old and yep. I had a methanol – breathing 500 it was just scary like yeah yeah and those bikes were literally very fast too yeah they, like they were, weren't they were um, like you could put them out there now and they'd still be competitive yeah you yeah. know with the just right really rider. hard to ride <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah. like switches yeah so you won the aussie title in that what, what year is that you reckon 2004 that's four yeah and then when did you switch to supermoto or was so, it a switch or was it a um did yeah you do both? So that was pretty much it then yeah i um what happened we had a so yeah, we sort of. I wanted to be a road racer, but it, you did. It just it just cost a lot of money, and yep. and um, even yeah, we sort of realised that supermoto was getting a bit of traction, and and um, it was a cheap way to do it. Yep. I could crash the bike and get up and keep going. Yeah. And so I was doing. I end up. I think that year in '04, I'd done a couple of track days at Wakefield, and I'd done a race there, and. Um, like on a road bike. No, on a 450. On my 450. Oh yeah, yeah. And just race with the 125s. Yeah. And um, and then. Uh, Mark Avard had a supermoto race at Sydney at the tennis centre. Yeah. And all the big guns come to it. Yeah. And um, and I, I went up there on my 450 on the Honda. And um, at the time, Paul Feeney was running the, the Husqvarna team, who um, he was importing Husqvarna for a lot of years in MV. And he's from Goulburn. And oh, so he? he knew my dad a little bit and he's seen the name. And and um, that night at the tennis centre... that. I, I think I had the fastest lap of every time I ran on the track of my my class and and um, crashed my brains out every wow. time. I couldn't – I just couldn't stay on the bike. I was just overriding everything. And so is that your first supermoto race? Yeah. I'd, no, I'd gone to Wakefield for a supermoto race a couple of weeks before, but yep. it rained and I just didn't get really a good but chance. But, like, it's a massive event. That was the first. Yeah. And, like, I'm racing – like – Yeah. yeah. Mickey Diamond. Yeah, Mickey Diamond. Yeah. And not not to mention the Australian motocross lads, the Australian road race guys, yeah. and they're all there. Craig Anderson. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Guys like Ando. And, um, but, yeah, uh, Feeney, Paul was um, impressed, I guess because he had an eye on me. He, he seen that I had some speed. And, yep. And, um, yeah, so a couple of weeks after that, we went to Bathurst Long Track, and, and he called us on the way to Bathurst and said, can Troy be up here on Sunday? And yeah. – um, and uh, dad, dad loves his flying. Um, had a mate that had a plane. Mm-hmm. And um, after the Bathurst long track yep. on the Saturday night, um, the next morning, dad's mate, we, we um, flew up to uh, Stanthorpe in 
Um, oh, really? Carnell Raceway. Yeah, the first round of the Australian Supermoto Championship. Wow. And um, and I was I had a, a factory set of leathers there, fully custom um, suit. They're waiting for me, and I'd never been. You know, this is big time for me. Yeah. My teammate was Josh McFarlane and um, mm. Chad Turnbull. Okay. And yep. um, yeah, and that was that was it. I, I went race and I crashed in every race, all eight races. I crashed that season, and um, yeah, it was a terrible. It was terrible. I Do you d- remember who else was in that then? Yeah, Shannon Johnson dominated that year. Did he? Glenn Allerton was good on the Suzuki. Yeah. Um, on the motocross guys, I can't remember Denny Ham. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it was Stuart Bennett. Yeah, Stuart K- Bennett, KTM, obviously, obviously KDM and Graham Cheney. Cheney. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Gary McCoy was actually on KX500 as well at that time. Or yeah, maybe just he, he was dabbling in it. I don't know yeah. if he'd done all the rounds or some of the rounds, mm. but yeah. And th- so the first year I'd, in um, 04, yeah. uh, should, I should be able to remember this, 05, I, I, I just didn't go well. Yeah. I just, yeah, I was just young and yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I was just so silly, really. I just yeah. I just wanted to be fast all the time, and I kept crashing, basically. <laughs> and you were fast, but it was just, yeah. just pushing it sort of thing. Yeah. And was that a 450 straight yeah. away, or 510? I rode the 450. The 450, yeah. Yep. And uh, Josh McFarlane rode the 660 at the time. Oh, yeah. And then... Um, the factory sort of... Yeah. Yeah. Which, um, which they realised after a year or so, it, it was cool, and it was a factory bike, but it was actually a lot harder to ride than the 510. Might have been an animal, mate. Yeah. yeah. He done well at riding that bike there as well as he did, actually. Yeah. He was a great rider, hey? Yeah, just smooth as silk. Yeah. yeah. I remember him coming to... He came to Ballina for that Aussie title, O2. Yeah. I think he might have even rode a 620 KDM. Yeah. Or a 540. It was a real it was weird... A big bore thing, Real I big think. bore yeah. thing. You know, sort of like your dad's Hustler, but Hustler, yeah. you said? Yeah. Real big bore bike and yeah. beautiful machine. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I remember that year, actually, because um, Josh used to dominate King of the Mountain. Yes. And um, and that year, Paul Paul was like, oh, we've got a dream team. We've got a young dirt tracker and we'll put yep. him with Josh and we'll dominate it. And Josh loved riding the 19-inch Speedway tyre around there. All oh, right. And I didn't have any experience on them and yep. and I just couldn't – I couldn't – it was real twitchy and I high-sided myself to the moon down the hill and – Jeez, I've had some crashes. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up in hospital in Toowoomba and, and he won it so many times and I, I was feeling the pinch because yep. I had this teammate that was a bit of a star in my mind. Yeah, he was. And, and I ended up – he ended up in the, in the locker room pretty early that day because I'd crashed the wow. bike on us, so – Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Is that the only time you ever rode up there? No, nah, I rode it the year before. And you know what? The year before, it was it was one I'd never forget. It was, they just sort of – the 254 strokes started yep. coming out. Mm. And um, I didn't ride – I rode the big class with my dad actually. Yep. Um, and he ended up he ended up crashing. My dad did. Oh, and, really? Yeah, I was going – we were sort of top 10-ish. Yep. But it sort of scared me a bit riding around there on a big bike because I was, I was only just out of juniors. and But on, on the – the lightweight class, I teamed up with a girl named Candace Scott and she had a brand new KXF 250 and yep. they'd only just released the RMZs and the and the KXs and there was a heap of us. I think um, Westy, Dan Reardon, Josh Waters, um, a couple of other motocross guys and yep. and we were just going for it. All the bikes were pretty much standard. There wasn't much you could do to them when they were brand new. So new, yeah. Yeah, and we were, we were having the best races. It was good fun. Do you know if – I actually never ever been there. Like oh, really? out of all the events, and I've been to a couple, but um, is that where they have the motocross now? Yeah. It's the you same can, facility, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. On the motocross weekend, you can barely pick out where it is, but yeah, it's quite steep. It's it's a pretty intimidating track. Because people used to run sliders and stuff there, hey? I don't know how. Like anyone who can ride yeah. a slide around there has got no... Crazy. Yeah. Because, yeah, I remember watching it a few times and I've seen... Um, I don't think Chris Watson ever did... Yeah. Don't know, but Brendan Osborough, another oh, yeah. Aussie champ. I think yeah. he did it a few times. And so the only thing with them yeah. guys, they run out of fuel in the twenty lapper. I guess. Yeah, that's a bit hard, isn't so it? Such small tanks. That's one way to get rid of the. Sliders. Yeah, that's right. Gets rid of them pretty quick. They're but always yeah, too to, fast. Yeah, they're so fast. To, to, and to ride there, as I say, I've seen the videos, but never ever got to that place. And yeah. you know, it's probably like one of the um, most historic dirt track yeah. sort of events in in Oz. Yeah, and so. the good thing with Toowoomba was on any day you could run. 17s, yep. trials tyre, motocross, um, uh, like a 19 inch speedway tyre, yep. and knobby front, like, um, and that it was competitive. It yeah, was real right. weird. Um, so it wasn't just one tyre, you've nah. got to be on this trials tyre, otherwise it's not going to work. Yeah, no, it yep. wasn't like that. You could sort of, if they had a bit of water, enough water where the slick line wasn't wet, yep. but enough where there was a bit of drive out wide, you could actually get away with both. So you'd get guys coming around. That's cool. Pushing the front a little bit and the guy on the outside of him full lock sideways. Yeah. Yep. And then the right hander up the hill was an Armco fence with a little lip and like Troy Cowell used to ride there every year and I just remember seeing him 
He'd yeah. stand up and just handlebars near the ground, come around the outside of everyone, and then launch up underneath him and put him up in the cheap seats up oh, into the geez. top left. Seriously? It was impressive to watch, yeah. Because he's a local up there too. He probably yeah. got a bit of a bit he of He was a great dirt tracker, actually. Was so he? There's a lot of dirt trackers struggle a bit with the dirt, dirt tracking sort of concept, but yep. he was, yeah, he was handy up there. Yeah, right, because it is. it is. It's like, and, and you've probably seen it in rivals along the way. You're either a motocross guy or you're a dirt track guy. Yeah. You know, you're either sit down or you stand up sort of thing, I yeah. guess. So it's a... um. You yeah. do see it. Yeah. What? When did it start to click on the supermoto? That year, um, even that year I was crashing a lot. Um, it felt good I still. Five, it, I knew it was sort of going okay, but Husky, yeah, not many guys wanted to ride the Husky like worldwide. And, um, yeah, Paul being the importer, he, he got a call from a team in America mm-hmm. um, and the Americans had just come out and just, I don't know how why it worked out this way, but... In the Aussie title rounds, I was going terrible. Yep. The Americans come out and all of a sudden I was the only guy that could match him or beat him. And right. um, not match him, like Stewie Bennett was still beating him a bit, but I guess there's only a few of us that could go with the American yep. guys. And whatever happened, them weekends clicked for me. I think it was something to do with we didn't have to race on the Maxxis tyres that I, I wasn't enjoying a lot, but I was crashing oh, on them a lot. But um, Remember that control tyre? Yeah, yeah. That, that's, so that's I started Superman on that tyre. And I just, I mean, now I'd be fine, but um, yeah. at the time I, I just didn't have the brain. I just didn't have the brains really. I just yeah. the race yeah. brain sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, and it, it, you had to work heat into it, and I didn't know the concept of that. And yeah. but um, yeah, it all clicked for me. The Americans come out, and and this team called Fiend and and said, um, we've got an injured rider. Would he, would you know, if Troy can um, pay for his flights, we'll give him a bike ride. And um, yeah. and so Paul come over with me. Yeah. We went over to the first round of the AMA Championship. And, um, Do you remember ra- where that was at? Yeah, Road America. Oh, cool. Elkhart Lake. Yep. And it, it rained so bad they cancelled the dirt section mm. um, on the first day, I think. Yeah, no, no, they cancelled all together. There's no dirt. But you still had the the jumps, the, the um, what are they, they call the urban cross jumps back yeah, then. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it was a 65-foot tabletop. And, um, Big jump still. Oh, yeah. It was – so what happened was uh, – I went really well. I got second in the All Powers race. Um, yeah, second in the All Powers race, and then the 450 final, they had guys like David Buffaloof and um, uh, Jurgen Van Der Van Der Bosch. Van Der Bosch. Yeah. yeah, he was the man. Like internationally, yeah. Yeah, and he even went to World Super Sport, and you know, I think he got a couple of top fives oh, really? and stuff. But yeah, yep. and um, so I was up there. I was sort of top eight on the on this Husky in the 450, but in the in the second main event, um, the guy on the KTM team, a guy named Kurt Nickel, was the boss of KTM then, racing yeah. in America, um, motocross, supercross, and supermoto. He was doing some as well. I um, oh, no. I jump, I come up onto this tabletop, and he just sort of checked up a little bit, and there was only one dry line on it. It's on, it's on YouTube, and I I just come into it and just touched his wheels. We took off, sixty five foot. Oh, it's, a, it's the same size as a, as a Supercross triple, and it's just thrown me up. I've gone flying, yep. landing on flat ground. I hit my hand that hard, I had pins and needles for about two days. Yep. And um, I went up and tried to apologise to him after it, and he just he, he just sort of told me to piss off, really. So was he like the boss of and KDM he was the Motorsport? Bo- he was the guy hiring and firing oh. for, for <laughs> motor racing. And, um, but after that... Um, after that, the the Husky team sort of didn't have much of a choice, really. They, I'd I'd beaten the teammate, and yep. and there was another race in two weeks, and and we got home, and they said, look, um, if you can get another flight out here, there's a there's another race, and we'll give you another go. Yep. And and Paul said, no, mate, you got to pay for this one. <laughs> and um, yep. they flew me out. I I um I got I think I won the 450 class, uh, won the open bike class, and I I got a second behind Doug Henry. I was on his tail the whole final and um, got a second. So they said, oh, look, you've got to come back now. So they flew me out for this double header, and I, and I won all four unlimited bikes and led the championship. And, um, and then I, I finished up there in the 450 as well. But it's funny, at the time I was working with my dad, I think I was making about 500 bucks a week working yep. full time. And, um, and at that stage, Supermoto was going crazy and yeah. no one was riding a Husky and no one really wanted to ride one. So the contingency program, I signed up and signed up. You just go and sign the Husky on a contingency plan, the Dunlop contingency plan or whatever it was at the time. And 
Husqvarna were paying seven thousand dollars US for a pro- for a, a privateer, which is what I was, to win a race, and and the double header weekend, I won four races. Seriously? So I've come home with more money than I was going to make in a year, and yep. and I got home from there, and and I think I was more of a hindrance to dad at work. So he said, "Look, mate." Why are you making money? Why don't you just start training properly and yep. and um and I'll give you some time off work and and that was it. from that point I've been lucky enough to be a, a, pro. a pro- professional rider. So tell me this, like at, at that time, um, so that's O five still. That was O five, yeah. So like I travelled to the states in O five, the dollar was like sixty cents. So when I come so home, so when you come home, you yeah. pay bank. Yep. Yeah. So that's that awesome. year I I I I made good money yep. from and it was money that anyone could make. I just signed. Yep. I just got there and signed the form, and I signed on. Yep. And um, yeah, it was a great period for racing. Like at the yep. time, Matt Milan was making, oh yeah, millions. And um, and then, yeah, pre- pre- like, pre-GFC money. That's right. And then yep. so the next the next two years, I was a factory Husky Rider of the Year after, and then went moved on to KTM, and I was I was making a good living. And and um, I think. I was going to go road racing anyway, but then just as I went to go road racing was when the GFC hit, and, yep. and uh, I can tell you now I made a lot less money when I come home. Oh yeah, yeah. Fell, the market but, fell pieces. Yeah. Which is, yeah, at the time that's sort of probably weighed into my decisions to stop racing because it was getting to a point where things were changing, and at that point you win a race, people want you, and um, you know mm. I was a respectful young guy and I was getting good rides because I was doing the business, and and then you see and you hear all these stories of guys bringing a lot of money, and and then. You know, my first experiences in Germany was, you know, getting the sack for next to no reason and, and not getting paid. and The moral it, ground. Yeah, it sort of, it become a thing of, it become a point where I wasn't going further in my career based on um, how I was acting as a person and how yep. I was riding the bike. Mm. That's, so, a, that's a tough one. Yeah. And it, it's probably, it's it's like such a dog-eat-dog dog, dog, eat dog world now. Yeah. It's like that probably across the board. Even in that period between 2011 and now, yeah. It'd be everywhere now, I guess, yeah. too, wouldn't it? Uh, but the, I sort of needed that, really, because I sat on the sidelines for a yep. year. I realised why I'm doing it, yep. what makes me tick and why I want to do it. And, you know, and then I probably readjusted my end goal. Like, when I was a kid, I was typical, I'm going to be a world superbike champion. That's all I want to do. That's yep. the only thing I care about. And you think you're the best guy in the world, even though you, you're not. <laughs> and um, yep. But after I had a bit of a break, I, you know, Okay, I'm happy to. I want to compete in a competitive championship, and I want to be competitive, and and I want to just go and enjoy racing for what it is. And and then I was actually a better rider after that, anyway. As far as um, what your actual craft got better. Craft, yeah, yeah. Tell me about the X Games. Oh, uh, that was a scary, scary time in my life. Really? Because it's like, it's probably like the Isle of Man, really. It, mm. It's sort of a race where you. I th- I don't know what people do it for, but like it looks like a race that you do because it's popular there's a lot of people love it yep. it's a high adrenaline sport especially then the yeah. x games was like um yeah. and there's money in it so you you're getting brought to it because it's it's mm. so dangerous really and like for me like it was a supercross race like there was literally a year where we went reverse through the supercross section so you know it's you know a harder supercross track yeah. is we're going backwards through it like um, makes no sense on 17 yeah. inch slicks yeah and my first time i had you know you got mcgrath chad reed who yep. at the time were still good like you know they were still leading finals and yeah he was winning he still won championships after that and um yeah my first year i was reserve and and i'm just so thankful i never made the start line because it was so scary that year they were, they were jumping up into the stadium and i oh, was at that one where it had that big jump yeah. into the down ramp in yeah and um yeah i i actually i got i could have had a good result when i when i when i did it with husky it was the i wasn't a good I had to work to be good on motocross, yep. and, and I got to the stage where I was going good at it. But on the Husky, I'd, I it was it was scary to ride that bike through the dirt section because it was a proper supermoto bike, wasn't it? Yeah, as it, such. It, it was a really good bike on the road. Yeah, um, but in Europe, there wasn't a lot of stuff where you had to be, you know, timing sections and and um, and it's bouncing into the face of a jump. Yeah, yeah, because that X Games, like, you know, I, I was doing supermoto at the time, and that was like the pinnacle of yeah. You know the sport, like well, not yeah. the pinnacle, like still the world championship for it. Still, it was, yeah. You know, or AMA Supermoto champs, the biggest thing. But the X Games coverage was fantastic yeah. for the sport. It was great, and once I joined KTM, and yep. they were right behind me. That 
they had a, they had a good budget and and um, it just was lucky that that race is in August. All the all the focus was on motocross for KDM at that stage. So the Supercross track in Temecula was not not really getting used that much. Yep. And um and so like this is how lucky I was at the time. For pretty much six weeks, I'd just drive out there, put the code in, sit there with the sprinkler system, water this Supercross track up, take my factory super motorbike out there, and ride Supercross pretty much for a month straight. At the KDM test track. Yeah. So I'm hitting the by the end of the month I was. By the end of the month, I was able to ride the Supercross track, like triple the sections, triple the, the triples, yep. um, hit the whoops on a super, supermoto bike. And, um, and so when I went to the supermoto race at X Games in 07, I was ready to go and yep. um, it made a big difference. And um, I was actually unlucky that year. We had our only mechanical we ever had uh, in that team was I was second in the race and my clutch, clutch broke. Oh, really? And, um, that cost a fortune. Was that the 450 yeah. SMR? Yeah. 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 So was there money in the X Games? Yeah. There so, was. Yeah. So it was 100 grand to win from ASPN when Doug Henry won it. For the Supermoto. Yeah. The, the years I'd done it was $50,000. Yeah. So when I finished, se- when I, when I, when I could have possibly won or finished second at worst, yep. like um, that was a $30,000 US payday. Um, oh, geez. Just from ASPN, not, let alone the, the KDM um, the contingencies and stuff like yep. that. And um, like even the first year I'd done it, I DNF'd and walked into him. I'd lanyard back and oh, here Troy, you've you've got some contingency, fifteen hundred bucks for doing two laps. Really? Like, that's just for making the final. And at the time, like yeah. I wasn't used to that. Like you've grown up doing dirt track in Australia. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? right. Like I was. Yep. Yeah, we we had a couple of good dirt track events where you'd you'd make a couple of thousand bucks and you'd make your your yeah. money back, and that was great too. But at the time, it was like. That was a lot of money for me. Yeah. I guess for Chad Reed going to the race at that stage, he'd be going to X Games, and um, you know it was just a bit of fun for him. For me, it was like I, I could make a yearly wage here like, yeah. um, if I put everything into it. Hey, that's huge. <laughs> yeah. like, the, it's so interesting to to see the two different scales of the sport. Yeah, you know, to see Chad come into that, and yeah. was, I think Nicky Hayden did it for yeah, one or two years it, yeah. as well. And you know, yeah. they, at that time, he was the world champ yeah. in MotoGP. Like, yeah. it would have been not a payday at all. Yeah, well, he he actually got a bit of. A, he got a bit of trouble from Honda, I think. They didn't it, want him to do it, I don't think. So he went and done X Games. This is the year after I stopped. Uh, maybe the last year I'd done it. But mm. he, anyway, he, he cased a jump and hurt his heel. That's he right. still raced, but I think he was in a bit of pain the first few GPs. And yep. Yeah. I, I can't imagine it would have went well, but he never really done it much after that. No, that was about it. Yeah. That was, yeah, it was a good time for the uh, for the sport. When you, when you did Husfana, yeah. before KTM, were you – you did the Aussie titles here for the Supermoto still. Yeah, were you travelling in, in between? Yeah. You were? Yeah. 06, I was, I was contracted to Husqvarna yep. um, to race in America. Um, in 05, I'd in 05 I done two world championship races. Yep. Um, as a bit of a trial with them and then spent a few weeks there and, and just hung out with the team and stuff yep. like that. And they then they put me into the American series as a as a factory Husqvarna rider. It was the same team, but they just got a bit different support. Mm. And then um and then I rode both classes in Australia. Yeah, S one S two. Yeah. So there must have been O oh four. So sorry. So O four was the year I crashed a lot. Yep. And then O five, I won every race of both classes, and then snapped my wrist at the first race of the last round, and I had like a a ridiculous points lead yep. and um and got beaten because I didn't there was four races for the day, hundred points up for grabs. Oh really? Yep. And um and I ended up in hospital and I finished fourth in both championships. Where was that at? That was at Newcastle. Oh yeah. Or Cameron Park was it? Is that what it's called? No. It was a supermoto track near Newcastle. I thought it was called Cameron Park. Was oh, it the one they did on the um the other go kart track down yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah, had a little bit a little bit of a funny whoop section and uh I was actually I was real nervous on the day because yep. I knew I could win it. Yep. And um, and there was a bit of a funny four section whoop thing, and and I couldn't jump it with it and still make the corner. Yeah, right. And for for God knows what reason, I tried to do it on the first half of the race, and um, and the guy in, and what I realised at the time I was coming off the jump before it and I was hitting it quite hard, and um and. I should have just followed a few guys because the two guys in front of me sort of slowed up and pre-jumped and 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 seat bounced or yep. sort of bounced into it. So I soaked uh, it up. And I was coming at him to do it the way I was doing it, and I I had to check up and I hit the last one and just went over. My hand went through the bark buster. Wow. And that's what a, a the little lump there it sort of dissipated my arm and and broke it. That was it. That's so, the end. Yeah. 
So that's 06. That was 05. And then 06, I won both championships. Yeah. That 06 year, um, they had the, I think it was the last one at Willowbank. Yeah. At the kart track. That's right, yeah. And I, I raced that one. Yeah, that was I, a good track, wasn't it? It was awesome, mate. Yeah. And I remember you coming past, like, I was never any good. Um, <laughs> and holy crap, that was fast, eh? Those yeah. bikes were really quick in that era yeah. too. Yeah, so that so. stage, I that stage I was getting going in America, yep. I felt good on the bike. Yep. And I hadn't, I'd learned a bit about how to set the bike up too. And you actually like, um, like bonded a bit more with it. Yeah. Because it was you and um, Adam, Adam Sini. Yeah, I think. How was, exciting was Adam to watch? He was great. Yeah, he and was he, really good. He was so good for me because one, he was a great guy. Yeah. Um, but he was an he was an unbelievably talented supercross rider. Mm. Like he would just make me look stupid at the motocross track. Yeah. But also at the X Games, for instance, like he did it too. He was he was a reserve. And I think yeah. he might have made the race, but like he he was jumping the supercross. Like when we rolled out, there's yep. got there's Chad Reed, and there's Adam Sinney jumping everything first lap like that's how good he was yeah like um and that bike was not easy to ride and so that was good for me he was riding yep. the open bike class and the lights bike and i was riding the 450 right and um and he was just a good guy like and good team, worked mate. hard and and rode real hard and he was he was gunning for me that year like so he was we were racing hard like we were, yeah. we were banging bars that year so yeah it was good like, like a really good time that that last race it's probably the last good race they really had there because it sort of drained out pretty quick after that. Yeah, but, unfortunately. You know, the KTM transporter there. Yeah. Obviously the Hus fund, like KTM was their supercross truck, like yeah. it was their factory truck. Yeah. Um, and the that, Honda guy's off-road team, was it? Honda the smaller the, truck with the Gravo. off-road team, that's yeah. right. Uh, Alex Gobert had the Aprilia yeah. set up. So do you know what happened after that weekend? No. Um, I can't remember what magazine it was, but they done a they done a test of the bikes and somehow all us guys yeah. rode each other's bikes. Really? Yeah. And um that's rare. That was real weird. Yeah. When you think about it now like and I don't know how like for me it was okay but, but I don't know how like Grabo riding for Honda off road and stuff. Yep. Stewie Bennett them guys we all rode each other's bikes and um yeah it was just on the road section no dirt or anything but um cuz that's one of the things uh, uh, as a racer you sort of always wish that you, you could wonder, do. You want to yeah. sort of see, you yeah. know, you secretly. Yeah. Wonder what it would be like to have a go on that. That's, yeah. that's really rare. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. That was a good time for the Supermoto. Yeah, it was. It was It was really good. And I think it was It was because their motocross guys wanted to be involved and it was a good yeah. off-season tool and road races. But the problem is we've become too specialised at it. Yeah. And, you know, at the start they could rock up and because they were so good they could just get going. But, yeah, adapt but, to it. But once we... Once we started setting the bikes up really well and I think it become hard to just rock up and that's what I think Chad probably liked about it and then guys is they could do a couple of track days before yep. it and they'd go and be competitive mm. whereas then you've got guys getting paid an income to test the bikes and, and set the bikes up and and then, yeah, it's um it's hard to be competitive with a speciali- specialist, isn't it? That's it. It's a, it's yeah. a job at that point. Yeah, you know, and I think that's what they didn't want. They didn't want it to be a job. But yeah. yeah. Exciting to watch. Yeah. Super exciting. And 08, so 08 you went back over to the States and that's when you won yeah. the title. Yeah. So d- Was that a good feel? So the reason I told you that story about Kurt Nickel was so yeah. at the end of the Husky thing, I I just I just knew I needed to be on. KDM was bringing the new bike. Yep. Um, uh, they had a good budget. They, 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 they were a really good team. And I just I didn't go that good on the Husky. Yep. So the first year I was, I was really fast and... And the bike. Once I joined the factory team, and I got the factory bike. It, it wasn't. It was reliable, but it wasn't as good. Whereas the guys running the private husky, they were getting that thing going, but it was just breaking down a little bit. Right. Um. And and so anyway, I I just went and had a meeting with Kurt and and sat down with him and just asked him for a ride. Did and, you remember? You? Oh yeah. He, yeah. He, yeah. He. And he was a real hard man. Like right. that guy was a hard man. Like yeah. he'd worked for what he got. He and he, and he was just a no bullshit sort of guy. Wow! And it was so intimidating, like sitting just like this, he ruined like this, and yep. I'm sitting there quivering because I'd I'd had Paul Fiend managing me before that, yeah. And and he was he had a lot of leverage because he was the importer for Husky for sure. And um and and now I was for the first time I was going to a team that didn't necessarily want me. Yep. Um, they were interested, but I had to sort of um you know sort of give my yourself. case to them and yeah, yeah it was. It was so good. They gave me a test on the bike and I went out at, um, we're at Utah at, 
uh, Miller Motorsport. Miller, yeah. It was a, a purpose-built track, and it was like a two-minute lap time. Must have been pretty new at that stage. It was brand new, mm-hmm. yeah. And the dirt, it was like a BMX track, the two dirt dirt sections. Wow. And I say it was a 156 lap time or something I'd done at the race. I went out on the KTM and I'd done 155 straight away. And and the, you know what the dirt, dirt's like at a supermoto track? It takes a while to sort of clean up. Yep. And I thought, geez, that felt good. And then I got on the new bike and I was like two seconds faster than I went all weekend on the Husky. And, and I come back in, I just knew that... Yeah. Like I had got a, to be I got a, I got yep. a good package here. Like yep. I got to ride this bike and yeah. So I that know. was the brand new 450 yeah. custom built SMR. Hey? Yeah. Like. So it, it had the fi- it was a four speed bike, but they had the five speed. It had like a it had an aftermarket short swing arm, big triple clamps. Like it Just, was adjustable trick. head angle. Yeah. Yeah. It was a it was a purpose built bike. Like I would lo- I always dreamed of bringing it back to race in the Australian stuff, so yep. people could see how good it is yep. like yeah but um did any yeah. of them come back here the that that level of um, i remember bike? there was like a was it the vendor bush yeah i think one of their prillias came back here yeah i think so too but i don't know if i've seen any of the um ktms i haven't seen i've seen my bike guys have messaged me over the years and said oh i've bought this bike it's it's i think it's your bike and yeah yep. like carbon fiber um air boxes and just really cool Really cool bikes. Pretty crazy in such a short time. You've come out of dirt track, racing with your dad, to now being in a factory KDM. Yeah, it was really, it was really weird to be honest. And and at the time, like that first year as a senior, like I was, I was just working and going to dirt track races and doing what dirt yeah. tracks I could. But then, I, and my like guys like Josh Waters and and them guys, they're racing on road bikes already, and we all wanted to be road racers. And yep. at the time, I'm thinking, oh, I want to be road racing so bad. And then before I knew what I'm racing the supermoto and, and I sort of just really wanted, I knew I could, I, th- I thought I could win in supermoto and, yep. and so I didn't want to leave until I'd sort of got a, got myself to the pointy end and yeah, I, w- I was really lucky. I'd, I'd got to the point where I was like, I've got to go road race in 09. I really hoped that I could go in America and stay there and race but yep. I had no leverage and I had, you know, I didn't have the funds to run my own team and um and I was sort of only wanted as a supermoto rider, really. I had no experience. At that year in 08, um, KDM let me take a Super Duke, uh, 990 Super Duke. Oh, yeah. They're just a big naked bike. Yep. So I was doing track days and I was going I was going okay yep. on it. But I hadn't ridden a, a race bike as such before. So At all? No. Nah, I, I bought an uh, a ZX6 X race bike yep. in 08, at the end of 08 there, and I'd done a couple of rides. And um and I really liked it. Was that still in the states or? No, that was in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. I actually done a race. They had a at Eastern Creek. They had remember they had the A one GPs. It was like the sort of small Formula One cars, and the different countries did... drove them. Mm. Yeah, so they had they had six hundred support class for that at Eastern Creek. Oh really? And um I end up I end up calling it a day early because I call calling it a day before the finish of it because I'd spent like. <laughs> I'd spend fifteen hundred bucks in tires, I think, and they were just—it <laughs> was cold and shitty conditions, they and they were tear tearing up. Yep. I said, "Bugger this! I'm not going back on the Sunday." And um, yeah, but I ended up um, doing that, and then I was just—I was really lucky. I—I I, I had such good support. Now I look back, like um, yep. like I literally drove. I literally flew back before the last round of the championship decider in America um, to go to the last round of the Australian Superbike Championship at. Um, uh, Eastern Creek yep. or Sydney Motorsport Park and I just I just rocked up there with my backpack and I literally just walked up and down pit lane talking to anyone that looked like they were in a team and, um, and just yeah I was just asking for a ride or a test ride basically and were you yeah. known like because Supermoto had a not a barrier but it wasn't um, you yeah. weren't in road racing were you no, known a I, little bit or I don't think I was generally in road racing they didn't look at a supermoto ride and said that guy's going to have potential on a road bike, yep. but um, like like Jay Foreman had ridden, had ridden the Suzuki team, um, the supermoto team, and and yep. so like he was good friends with Phil Tate and running the Suzuki team. Right. I, I imagine I've never got the full story, but I remember Gilesy telling me that you know Jay always had um, spoke in high regard of me, yep. which was nice, and and I think um, it just was really lucky at the time. The guys that they had as an option for the 600, which Phil saw as a development series, were sort of established riders. Yep. I think Judd Greedy, who was, you know, 
bless mm. him. He, like he, he had, the poor guy had a, a fatal accident. But at that stage, he was getting ready to start winning championships, yep. and he was probably on the way to it that year, maybe. Um, but so that year before, they had sort of him, and a, and a couple other guys that had been pretty established, and and so and so Suzuki put Judd into a a, um, a private Suzuki team, right. and Phil took me in. Um, based off no experience, oh. he literally gave me a test ride at Winton. Giles, he was injured and was come back from an injury. And so they, said, they thought, oh, we'll put Giles in the 600 for the day to get his eye back in. Giles, he picked me up on the way down there. We drove to Winton. I'd done two sessions in misty rain and, and I, I knew the lap time that I thought I should be doing and yep. I wasn't near it. And at the end of the day, Phil brought me in the truck and said, here's a contract for 2009 if you want it. And... Um, yeah, they were, they were so good to me. They paid me a base salary so I could I could afford to race for the year without yep. working. And um and I went back to America for the last round and that was it. I was whether I won that race in America, I was going to go road racing. That's obviously a sign of how you carry yourself as a person too. Like you, I you hope couldn't so, yeah. you couldn't do that as um being a prick. You know no, what I mean? Like yeah. to, to put it like that, you you obviously carried yourself in a professional manner. Yeah, even I think it 11 years like ago. Like now yeah. I look back it goes I think it goes a long way. Yeah rocking up like I didn't have my dad with me I didn't have a mate with yep. me I literally drove there on my own yep. and I I was just and it was intimidating like like um yeah like especially these guys like Phil Taint and like they're yeah. kings of the sport aren't they yeah I'm sitting in a truck with Phil Tate and Perry Morrison oh. and I was just like quivering yeah like and I've got no experience I'm trying to yep. tell them I'm going to be good <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah it, yeah that's huge yeah that was looking back on it it was yeah, it's pretty interesting times, really. Was it good fun living in the States? Yeah. It was actually good? Yeah. Where'd you base yourself? So the, the first year I was in San Diego. All right. And um, I was really lucky. The guy, a friend of the team, Kirk, um, he was a single bloke living on his own. Yep. Um, he took me in and I had a, a van to drive myself around in and, and I was just going down to the beach in La Jolla every day and wow. getting the shirt off and sitting on the beach and so what living the high life. You're 33 now. That's like yeah. uh, 12 years. So 21 year old. Yeah, I think I might have been. So 05. Yeah, 20 yeah, years old. I was old. young. Yeah, just, I was underage. I was just underage. Yeah. For to drink over there. So 20 year old and, winning the supermoto title in the states. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool time. It was. Yeah, it was the best. Yeah, yeah. and then years with with um KTM like, like I had a top of the line motocross bike and you'd literally go in and and um and the mechanics they were all good to me because I wasn't you know I wasn't a rock star. I was going yep. in there getting my bike ready and. And them guys would all get behind me. I'd, I'd come in to get my bike and, and the Supercross mechanics had whacked a new set of tyres on it. Oh, so really? every day I'm going out with a new set of fresh rubber and, you know, um, like Josh Hansen had crashed the bike and that the, the FMF muffler had a bit of a kink in it. So all of a sudden I've got myself a factory exhaust and wow. like just stuff like that. And even like sending me home with a box of fork, a um, couple of sets of forks and stuff to put in my bike at home. And it was just, I was so lucky. Like, yeah. Literally that time I didn't have any commitment over there. I didn't ever rent a house or anything because I was just staying in the summer. But there was one stage I had a massive sprinter. I had the supermoto bike, the motocross bike and the Super Duke. Yeah. And I had the KDM fuel card and, and I could just get a motel. Like um, they had a deal with Best Westerns and I could stay at a Best Western motel. And I was just driving around riding and, and Kurt um, Nickel, the guy yeah. running the team, he sort of... He never really questioned what I was doing because I wasn't the type of guy. I was never really out, you know, yep. multiple nights in a row on the piss and, and playing up. Yep. I never got in trouble as such, um, barring one time. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and and he was okay with it. It was yep. just a, a bit of a just a bit of fun that went wrong. And um, What was it? Uh, underage drinking. Okay. Yeah, yep. which I was old enough to drink. It was yeah, actually yeah. – he actually knew – I actually wasn't with KDM at the time. Yeah. And I thought it might have hampered my, my – my, um, yeah, and this the is the twi- twenty-one age drinking. Yeah, because we're that's right. So I was, know, so I was actually with Michael Curtis this night. I'm going to tell the story because yeah. it's it's bloody awesome, <laughs> and um, oh, it was the best. We I went out to a um, the Husky guy, the Husky sub Husky had a, a couple of guys running a dirt track team. Yep, and they asked if I'd be interested in doing a, the the short track national at Illinois, which, wow. which obviously I was super keen to do. Yeah, and um. So Mick Curtis is a mate of mine. He was racing with the Suzuki team. Yep. Uh, I went out and done it. It was the best fun. And um, so that night, um, I can't remember. I know exactly what when it was. It was the day that, unfortunately, Steve Irwin passed away. Oh, yeah. Because at midnight, 
we're all on the piss and, and all these American guys are saying to Mick and I, hey, you know, you know, you know how big of a star oh, it's huge. he was over there. They're like, geez, Steve Irwin's died. And, you know, obviously at the time we didn't believe the way he passed, we're all, all drinking anyway. That's how I remember the night it was. But so I end up in so much trouble. We went to a hotel that I wasn't staying at. Yep. We we're with these two guys. I wish I could remember his name. He's a great lad. And we're trying to get in to the downstairs bar. And I didn't have ID, which I didn't matter for it anyway because I wasn't old enough to drink. Yep. And I had a couple of drinks at this private party we're at. And the American guys had decided it'd be a good idea if I pretended I was an American guy and put on an American accent. Oh, no. Maybe that would be easier. Yeah. So the security guard didn't let me in because I didn't have an ID, not because my accent wasn't good. I think my accent actually passed. Yep. So there was a party upstairs at the Hilton um, Motel we're at. So, oh, let's go and try upstairs. So I've gone upstairs. It might have been the other way around, actually, because I think I was downstairs. But anyway, we've gone to the next one. And I'm like, nah, I'll just be Australia, I'll just be myself. I'm trying to get into this bar and it's actually going okay. The security guard from upstairs or downstairs where it was oh, no. comes past and and it's sort of he'd let me off down the bottom because I was a, a decent guy and you know, he's having a bit of a laugh. He said, Look, I believe you're over eight, I believe you're twenty one, but I can't let you in. But then he realized that I was put on this accent. Yeah. So he thought that I was American and I was pretending to be Australian when he come. And I'm, yep. and so you imagine I'm like, no, mate, no, 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 I'm Australian. I swear to God, mate, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done it. Yep. I, like, I'm, I'm, I'll get out of here. It's, it's late by this stage anyway. And he is furious because I'd made him look like a bit of an idiot yep. in his mind because I was putting on this um, Australian accent now yep. when I was actually American. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not, mate. And anyway, he's, lo- he's lost his temper at me. Yep. And he's, he's tried to physically get me out of there and, and he was only a little fella and, and he's throwing my arms around. Was, the way it's gone, he's ended up on the ground yep. and I've just shit myself. Yeah. And I'm like, no, look, I'm really sorry. I'm going. I've gone to give him a hand up and he's just railed me, him and his mate, into the ground, yep. arrested in the paddy wagon, off to... Um, is it Illinois? Off to Illinois, lock up for the night. <laughs> and I'm in this cell and there's these two big guys next to me and I'm shitting myself well, Curtis is having too much fun. Yeah. So he's like, mate, I'll come get you in the morning. <laughs> like, so- <laughs> you're what? Like, the party was just getting started in his mind and yep. um, and he thought, nah, you'll be right, I'll come and bail you in the morning. It's only one night. <laughs> he didn't rock up until 9.30 in the morning. I was sitting there with these two big blokes yep. shitting myself. Like, and I was, a, I was a little pretty boy from Australia. I was. And, um, mate, I left there with – I had to go – like I couldn't go to court because I was racing. I did. There was a court case. I was trying to get a visa at the time, but I they tried to do me for underage drinking, fair call, yep. trespassing at the Hilton, yep. assaulting an officer, uh, resisting arrest, and assaulting an officer. Holy! That's God. what they tried to get me for, yep. and no one was injured. I did. Yep. You know, I had a bit of a scuff on me from where they threw me in the paddy wagon. I mean, that yep. was, yeah, and that was just as I was trying to, I was starting to talk to Kurt, and and I fessed up when I was chatting to him I'll let you may hear about this and you know with the visa because the visa is a big part of it I need a visa yep um and he, anyway he's like he was okay and um that was the only time I've really been in big trouble man that's huge and the Isle, <laughs> the Isle of Wight at Phillip Island doesn't count does it oh mate there's a lot of stuff <laughs> happens there that's <laughs> like going on tour yeah that's right so, it should stay there oh it should yeah well it, it's finished now yeah unfortunately those old Isle of Wight times the upstairs, and then yeah. they had the concert in the tent out the side, and that. Yeah, it was a good, good was era great. for MotoGP, especially when we're young blokes. We're there yeah. as fans, and you know, on yep. the odd occasion, you'd see one of the big stars would come in, and there, you yeah. realise they're just normal people, don't you? you that's know, the thing. I think that's the big thing, and um, people are just people. At the yeah. end of the day, you know, like uh, it doesn't matter who you are, people are just people. So yeah, it's that's right. Yeah, but uh, mate, that's huge. Yeah. Was Kurt like? Because you've got sort of two crosses against your name, you just crashed into him, yeah. And then you've got right. that. Was he was he all good? Like from from once yeah. you got on the team and you're winning and yeah, he's good. I think he, you know, he liked the fact that I was there on my own. Yep. I was I was batting for myself and and um yeah and like and back to the the having the car and the bikes and he never really questioned the money yep. that was getting spent because I never I never stayed at nice places. I never was going out and doing silly things and I was putting in a big effort and um and I was stunned and I was winning too so there was no questions asked really. Who was on Supercross then? Josh Hansen was one. Yeah, Josh Hansen. I think Justin Brayton was there. Okay. Uh, you know what? 
the old ute that I got, the, the old ute I had when I got there, this yep. old clunker was Brett Metcalf's old ute. Oh, was it? So he must have just left the team then. I think yep. he may have went to Pro Circuit or something. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the eras, but... At least they, if you got Hanson there, if yeah. there's any like stuff <laughs> was, that's going to happen, he's going to yeah. take it. So. Yeah, mate, he was he was so talented, but far out. Good style. Yeah, like I used to go and watch at the Supercross track a bit, and I'd ride when they went on the track, yep. and like when he was going around the track, he'd always he'd always avoid the whoops because he didn't like yeah right being physically too hurt. Yep. He'd, he'd just do them on race weekend. Wow. But like, mate, when he was going through a section, he was often jumping something that some guys weren't. Mm. But there was never a panic rev. Like, it was just smooth as silk. Just flow. Yeah. Yeah. It was great to watch. Super talented. Yeah. He actually done some supermoto races with me as well. Did he? Yeah. Um, he never done... He may have done one AMA race in lights. I think he got on the podium. Yeah, right. But um, I actually got to do some testing on the lights bike, some engine testing for the Supercross team. Yeah. They just sent me out to the go-kart track and just I'd have to do like a full tank moto, 45, 50 minutes. And these with, bikes, with the supermoto set up on it. Yeah, they just yep. put the supermoto um, wheels in it for me. Yep. And I just put as much stress as I could to that engine for an hour, yeah. a couple of times a day. That was fun because th- them bikes were, I mean, that was a long time. That was 08, but they were like, I think they were like 45, 46 horsepower 250S Decent at the time. Horsepower. They were revving hard, yeah. So that's the, yeah, 250 SXF, like yeah. the first few years of them. Yeah. Any of them grenade? No, I never grenaded one. Not and one. there was a lot of, you know, they were grenading a bit back they then. They were, yeah. But, um, yeah, I never blew one up. But I remember I'd only ever really ridden big bikes yep. ever since I went off a two-stroke. And it sort of almost scared me how hard this thing had rev. I'd always be short-shifting because the thing, had, you'd get yep. to whatever it was and it'd go another 4,000 revs. Just keep revs. going and going. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah they, they, that era, like uh, seven, eight, nine, there's a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of detonation happening. Yeah. So when you – so you came back – you went into Phil Tainton yeah. the year after is when you got your super sport title, huh? Yeah. Yeah, the first year, 09, um, I was just – I was in the deep end, like, yeah, big time. On the G- G6R 600. Yeah. yeah. Like, my first ride with the team yeah. was uh, a private day at Phillip Island. Yeah. And there was me, Josh Waters and Gilesy on the superbike. Yeah. Chris Vermeulen and Aoki on the MotoGP bike, Suzuki. Melandry and their test rider on the Kawasaki – and I think it was Corsa and Haslam on the BMW World Superbike and Kagiyama on the on the Suzuki World Superbike. So you're talking 09? Yeah. So you're talking... Uh, 09, yeah. For whatever, yeah. whoever's riding... First year of the BMS 1000. Yeah. Wow, what a Mate, day. it was scary. The first, yeah. My first or second flying lap, I hit a seagull and that scared me. Yep. Like, I have three memories of the weekend. One's the seagull. Yep. Two's for Mullen come past to me way too close down the, down the straight, yep. doing about 80k an hour faster than me when I'm already going faster than I've ever gone. Yeah. And my third memory, which is a, almost a highlight of my career, was Melandry passing me and then crossing the line and he's on his in lap. Yeah. And he is putting on a show. He knew right. I was behind him. Yeah. Out of Siberia, the thing's bucking and weaving, up over Lukey Heights. He's, I'm, on his, I'm on my limit. He's on his yep. in lap and I'm following him. He comes out of MG... Looks back over his shoulder and, you know, you come out of 11 yep. and you peel it into the pits. Mate, the smoke pissing off his rear really? wheel. I'm, a, I'm on his wheel on my limit, probably done my best lap of the weekend at the time. And, yep. and he's just looked back out of MG, seen I was there and just ripped the biggest burnout all the way into pit lane. Wow. And I'm just thinking, how? And every, right. even Giles did that weekend too. Whenever he'd pass me, yep. um, he he just rip a big burnout just to show me what it, what is capable of doing. What it can do. Yep. Yeah, and like at the time I was just blown away. Yeah, but that was my first two days on the bike, and then that's huge. Yeah, had a good year the first year. I I didn't. Oh, sorry, I won a race. I got I got a, a third place at Eastern Creek, and um, I won at the last round. But it was really patchy conditions. I, mm. I was never fast enough to win that year in the dry. How did you adapt to the speed? Um, it scared me a lot, especially. Yeah. That first that first weekend, you but go once like I directly the to race, Phillip Island, like the fastest track yeah. in Australia. It's a it's a big jump in the water. Yeah, it's a double edged sword, Phillip Island, because you don't feel like you're on a powerful bike there, so that didn't scare me. Yeah, but then the, how fast you're going scares you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the first once the racing started, the speed you forget about the speed because you're just sitting next to a guy, and that's how fast you're going. Really, you're not looking at things come past you. That's right. But um, yeah, I'm you're not, not looking sideways. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow, that's huge. So. 
So you got you got a couple of wins or a win. Got a win, yeah. You're there. Yeah. Who, who was who was around at that that time? In so that was the last year that guys were doing double duties. Jamie Stafford oh, yeah. was Jamie and Brian Starring. They were so at the start of that year it was Judd as well. Yep. Judd was Judd and Brian dominated the first round. Yep. And and Jamie was fast and also um, was Brian Shane, still in the Honda? No, he was Yamaha teammate with um, Jamie. Uh, then you had Shannon Johnson on a Honda. Yep. Um, ben Adard on a Kawasaki. Yep. There's a few fast guys on on the on the R6s. Yep. And then there was me on the Suzuki. Um, I was always around. Sort of, depending on the track, I was I was given Shannon and and Benny a bit of curry sometimes, but they were pretty crafty lads. It's a hard apprenticeship. Yeah, it was really lucky because the next year. Um, there was I was the only factory bike the next year, um, yep. like like Brody Waters had a good bike and there was a good triumph in there, but um, yeah I was probably lucky I got that first year. One more on really good tyres that year because after yep. that we all went to a controlled spec tyre which wasn't as good, mm. so I had a lot of grip that year and I had a lot of fast guys to follow around, and then um, I learned a lot so, from that year. Yeah, what was the tyre in twenty ten? It was a controlled Dunlop, Dunlop. and I think. The superbike had a French one and we had an English one or something, or maybe oh, really? vice versa. The superbike one was horrendous. Mm. Um, they were like Dunlop had a great tire at the time, and like that year I was on Dunlop tires and and we were flying like yep. yeah. I, I think at Phillip Island I done like a, a one minute thirty five eight, which is a thirty five to the island at the time was a really fast time. This on a six hundred. Yeah, I think now that they're, they're still. They're going that fast now, but it took a fair few years to get going. Still faster. Yeah, they're yeah. going faster now. I shouldn't say that. They're definitely going faster now. But, um, but yeah, it's the, 10 years too. Yeah. The know. year after, I think 36.9 was my best time. So wow, big tyre difference. Yeah. And, it was, and that was a good year too because I'd got on Josh Waters' ex-factory bike for 09, which he'd been winning on a lot. So I was riding a bike that they knew, same tyre, same bike. Um, but that next year, I had to figure out how to set. Well, Phil and I had to figure out what I wanted, and Phil had to figure out how to set that bike up for me. Yep. So that probably was a good year too, in the way I didn't have the the out and out speed of competition, but I still had guys like Brody Waters and Christian Casella that year stepped up really well, and yep. and we had some really good battles that year. Was Phil Tayton? Is he a wizard? Yeah, there's a few guys in Australian Superbike that are really yep. good. Like you got obviously Paul Free. Yeah, there's, there's Freebie. Yep. Clarky who just left me last year was. Yeah, mate, yeah. that guy is good. Just new things back yeah, to front. Really yeah. good. Um, there's there's heaps. There's a guy with any. I shouldn't say there's heaps. There's there's a, a guy with every manufacturer that's really good. Yeah. Um, and that, but there's a lot of guys that have a good Instagram page too. Yeah, that's another like, thing. That's the problem, isn't yeah. it? Because Phil's thing, one at that time. Hey, he was. Yeah. He was going really good, like yeah. across the board. You yeah. know. Well, you look at Benny Henry now. Like. Yep. He, you know, up until a few years ago people probably didn't hold him at high regard, unfortunately, because yep. unfortun- the unfortunate thing with a crew chief or a mechanic, there's no, like, people don't see a price value. You know, if you buy this hat, it's worth 40 bucks. Yep, there's the product. Yep. Yeah, that's what you get. That's how much it is. And the tyres are worth this much and the exhaust is that much. But then a lot of people expect that, you know, their, their expertise should be for free. Mm. Or, or not free, but not cost Not much. valued. And, yep. Yeah, and they're... And it's yeah, it's t- a tough game. I reckon being a crew chief, like like you got to be a you got to be able to set a bike up. You yep. got to be able to un- understand a bike, um, and you've got to be a, a psychologist, really, a sports psych. Yep. Pretty much because like um, we're all head cases. All the motorbike riders are head cases. We're all different, <laughs> and unfortunately, there's not a way of setting up a bike. It's more about how we're working in our head yep. on the day. Because like we we've been to Morgan Park. That many times this new bike, I yeah. guarantee, poor old Freebie's going to be turning that bike upside down on a Thursday afternoon because it's a race weekend. It'll all change. It'll all change. Yep. Yeah. The nerves will be so, different. Things will be different. Yeah, it'll be a tough job. Mm. That's for sure. So 2011, you 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 won the title in 10. 2011, that's when you went overseas. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so I'd done the I'd done a year on the super bike. Yep. And and fill out a year a plan for me. Like I never had a contract over two years, but. Phil said to me, you're going to be here three years at least yep. and, and maybe four. I want you to learn, win, learn, win. Yep. And, um, and he, he, he seemed to have a respect that I wanted to go overseas in that fourth year. Yep. 
but he didn't advise me to do it. He advised that I stay in Australia. Mm. And I should have done that maybe, but probably the outcome would have been the same because I was that desperate to go overseas. I would have spent that fourth year just thinking I should have went, I should have went, I should have went. Yep. And, um, and anyway, I'd, I'd done that year on the superbike in Australia and I, and I went really well. I was really consistent. I didn't crash a lot at all. Um, I got third in the championship. Yep. I was never fast enough to win the race, but I spent a lot of the time being there and learning. And that was G6R? Uh, yeah. 1,000? So, yeah. Yep. And Josh... Josh Waters was in his prime then. Yeah. Like he he was doing a at that time he was doing half the season and then racing overseas and he was he was fast yeah. and um, it was hard really because I I'd grown up racing with Josh mm. and um, it just felt like every time I went to a track he was just half a second quicker every time I went out out of pit lane even more sometimes like he's just so consistent hey yeah mm. and um, that poor guy had an unfortunate few years like like getting hurt and. And um, probably when things were starting to really take off, he got really badly hurt. That was in uh, Willow Springs. Yeah. And no one knows how, like, no one really knows what happened then. Like, he doesn't actually, I don't think he actually knows and whether he doesn't want to know, but, like, yeah. that was a really bad accident. Like, he was... Because that was, was in the States, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And when he came back, he was coming to the races and he was not, um, like, that took a long time for him to yeah. get over that. And then he got going good again and... And then, um, yeah, for whatever reason, when he went overseas, he, he had flashes of brilliance, but it just didn't click. He, you know, there's the same old story. Who knows what it was, yeah. um, unfortunately. But, like, at that time when I was riding with him, he was real fast. Like, yeah, he was yeah. going to Suzuka and, and you World know, he fast. was fast as well, guys. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So, which is good. That's what you want, isn't it? You want to be racing against the good guys. For sure. But then you want a couple of trophies in the cabinet too. To do it as well. <laughs> did, did you ever do a Suzuka? Yeah, I've done a couple You've now. you done a couple? Yeah. So I've done... Four? Yeah, yeah, four. Yeah. Who who, do you, who you teamed up with? Uh, first year I was with Jamie Stofer. Yep. Um, and and a Japanese rider. You done one with Hooky as well, didn't you? Did you? Did I do it with Hooky? I don't think. No, no, I didn't do it with Hooky. No. He um, he was sort of one level of bike above me. He 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 was riding. He was riding on the bike I rode the second time. Right. And then I've never made the bike he's riding now, but mm. that one day I hope. But yeah, yep. so I've, I read, I rode two years with um, Sakurai Honda, which is a, a really well known team in that race, right. and they they had one years ago. Um, and then I went to the Team Asia bike, right. which was that was a great experience. They were all I think there was seven or eight different nationalities in the team, through mechanics and stuff. Yeah, uh, Makoto Tamada was the team manager, right? And XGP we, racer too, yeah, I think. Yeah. Yep. And we didn't have the best bike. We didn't have a factory bike. We had a really good package, but and we finished sixth or seventh, um, which was better than better than that bike Should was be. supposed to be. And um, and then I got to ride the Morawaki bike last year, which wow. was awesome. And um, that that track, you've sort of got to be on a Bridgestone tire, really. And um, I rode Bridgestones the first three years. Yeah. And then I got on the Morawaki bike and I was like, oh, this is it. But the Pirelli tyre just didn't have the life in it in them conditions. Mm. When they race, when they go to Europe and it's cold, yeah, it was great. But for whatever reason, I think that the experience that Bridgestone got there, you sort of need to be on a Bridgestone. But we still done well. We got ninth in the race, first yep. bear, first um, non-Bridgestone tyre, I think. Wow. And, um, yeah, that and that was, that was fun. That bike was fast and... Good electronics. Just a good package. And, yeah. And, and just, that was still the older evolution of the Fireblade still, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, I hadn't ridden the new one yet. And, and even when I was there, everyone knew the new one was coming, but yeah. none of the Japanese would talk about it. But it's silent. Yeah. So. Wait, what's it like going from tyre to tyre? Like, what, what are you on on your Honda here? I'm on a Michelin now. You're on a Michelin? Yeah, this year. What was it like going to another Fireblade with, like, uh, with a different tyre, like a Pirelli and stuff? Is it is it, a, is it a big transfer? Yeah, so it was, yep. yeah. I, I had a lot of years on Dunlop and a lot of years in Pirelli. Yep. And then going to, going to Japan and riding the Bridgestone, that was the hardest because yep. that tyre was, um, I guess it was more of an open tyre. Like, it was, it was a... It's a, f- a factory tire, I guess, wow. and it and it demanded like you've got to be going to get that thing to work. Like, like it loses temperature if you don't go fast enough, even at a track where it's forty degrees. So, um, you've got to be going really well to, so to get the temperature. It's a proper factory tire. Yeah. Yep. And to be honest, the Michelins are sort of more that way now. They're maybe a little bit more temperamental 
of a tyre? Yeah. Oh, not really. It's sort of hard to explain. The Pirelli is really good for a track day guy. You roll out of pit lane and... and um, You'll have enough grip. And, and it's got grip all the time. Yep. Um, the Michelin's got that, but if you're willing to get that thing working, yep. it just keeps going and going. And, and I don't I don't think I've seen the potential out of the Michelin yet. Really? But, um, yeah. We're pretty excited. Like, we've got a new bike. We've got new tyres. Like, Michelin are really behind us at the moment. And, and um, we've been doing a lot of testing and we're starting to make clear inroads now. So, um, yeah, when they finally get this championship going, we've got a great package. Six weeks, mate. I hope so. Yeah. You reckon, it'll be, reckon we'll get going? I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I, reckon, for some I want to go reason, to Taylor Bend. It feels like we're going to get going. And and the new bike, I'll come to it, I'll come to it, but the new bike at Taylor Bend, that's, um, that should be good. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good track for it. Yeah. I I really think we're, it'll be a good first track for us. I think so. Yeah, yeah definitely. Now, you come home from IDM, retired. Yeah. What did you do for work? So... I spent so once I was done, I was done late in the year. I I went to England and rode a bike in Aprilia, back to Germany, trying to what sort of Aprilia? Uh, the, like a RSV four. Yeah, yep. yeah. I rode with a, a team in in British Superbike. Yep. Um, yeah, and then I went and rode the Honda, and I was just trying my best to find a ride. And um and I'd I'd find a I'd found a ride with, I won't say the name of the team. I found a ride with the BMW team, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, they. would They'd already given my teammate, who was a good friend of mine, a, a start, um, and then they'd found out I was available, and and they were, yeah, the way I could read the writing, and and they were basically willing to get rid of my teammate to put me in and, and they take that him. spot. Yep. I think they, I, I believe they were definitely going to shaft him, yep. and um, and that didn't play the way I'd been sacked and the way that was playing out. I it just didn't sit well with me, yep. and um. And I got home, and I remember I, I got home, and I said to, I said to my mum and dad, uh, I don't know if I'm going to go back next year. Like if you, if dad always said, if I've got work, mate, if you, if you want to, if you want to come and do some work, I've got too much work at the moment, so yeah. I need someone. And I sort of said to him, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm going to, not go back. I'm, I might start work with you. And they, they laughed. They literally yeah. laughed at me. Wow. And, I, and we went, to, we're at dinner at their place, and I told them and. And anyway, and I was down at the coffee shop and my mates are there and I'm thinking, geez, this is good. I'm hanging out here with my mates and... Enjoying it. It's good. And um, I rang Dad and said, I'll start work with you. I'm, I'm, um, I've sent the contract back. And actually I, I called him and um, called him and said that, look, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's for me. Like I'm just letting you just know that I, I, don't, I don't think it's for me. And um, wow. and they they sort of didn't really believe me or either like, and so I just I emailed them and said, look, bef- well it's still December and you got plenty of time. I'm not signing the contract. I'm I'm staying home. And um, yeah, and that was it. Done. And and I said that I'll start. Work. I'm gonna have a month at home, and then I'll start work with you. And he said, mate, I got too big a job on. Go down. Um, here's the business card. Go down to the works. Go down and get some um work. Get some new pair of boots because it'd been couple of years since I worked with dad so I literally told dad that I'd not stop riding yep. on a Sunday and I think Tuesday morning I was on the shovel at work what so sort of work did dad do just um small subdivisions and earth moving oh yeah yep. so he's had a, he's had a back all, all my life yep. and then yeah a little greater and all older stuff but yep. dad's a dad's a handy bloke so everything always worked well still going yeah yeah he's actually starting to wind down now thankfully otherwise his body's not going to last much longer but <laughs> Um, yeah, so he was always on his own and he'd get a couple of contractors in. Yeah. And then it was just him and I. I think I ended up doing it for close to two, uh, definitely 18 months or, or a year and a half and then probably another six months of on and off. And then um, once it got back to where Honda were, were going to employ me again, or once I was getting employ- employed, so that first year I raced, I was just funding it myself and... and um, and I was like, I had good support, don't get me yep. wrong, but um, I wouldn't have been able to afford to do it properly as good as I did. But um, I was paying my entry fee and, and um, yep. I had a mate from Goldwyn help me out as a mechanic and and um, paying my tyre bill and all that, kind of, all that wow. kind of stuff. But, yeah. So Honda, was that 14 you went to Honda? Yep. Yeah, I had yeah. 13 off. 13 yeah. off as a whole year. Yeah. So 14, private Honda with a friend. Yeah. And you did the whole series? Yeah, yeah. This is sort of when it was split too, wasn't it? 
There's an That's ASPK right. and then That's there was right. the FX and stuff. Yeah, 14 and 15. It was I the split years. I wrote FX. I wrote a couple of um, oh, one or two ASPK events in 15. Yep. Yeah. How, how was riding FX at that time? Well, for for a rider, it was it was Australian Superbike, yep. if you ask me, because it was all the best riders they were all together. There. Um, the concept was different. I enjoyed it. Yep. Um, you know, a couple a lot less tyres, control tyre. Yep. Short races, but plenty of starts, so it was quite intense. So you had constant races. Yeah. A lot more. Yep. Yeah. It was a lot. Of, it was good fun. Mm. Um, like a. Yeah, I like the longer races. I yep. probably so, okay. I prefer the longer races. I didn't. It wasn't that I didn't like the shorter races, but um, I like when the mental and physical battle comes into it, mm. which is more in more in the longer races. But um, it was definitely fun and intense the way it worked. Like the Saturday events, you had you had three races, but yep. um, your fastest lap time, your fastest lap time was uh, you qualifying for the Sunday over them three races on the Saturday. So you got guys. It's a tactical battle. You want to win, yep. but you want to get off the back and get a toe as well and get a fast lap. Right. So, like, Jamie was good at it and, and Wayne. They, yep. like, uh, well, Wayne's, they had different – they were the two benchmarks and Wayne was the guy that just got out and went for it and just raced and, yep. and tried to do laps. Jamie would sit back off the front group and just run at him. Yep. And, um, and, and he often get a good lap Like slipstream, well. get in the draft. Yeah. Yep. I, I definitely – so I, I – once I got up to speed – at first, I was just racing. I was just yep. trying to hang on. But um, once I was up to speed, I was sort of half half. I'd I was always wanting to win, but I was if I knew I was on the guy in front of me, I'd I'd get off, run at him, and then bank a lap. All right, good. I've, I think I've got a lap now. Yep. I'll try and go try on. and race. Yeah, I always wanted to win the race, but yep. yeah. But you still want to be up the front for for the day after. That's right. Yeah. Why Why did you at that time choose a Honda? I chose the Honda because they had what I thought was the most established team in the country. Yep. Um, and, yeah, that's that's the reason. I, yep. I pretty much, I wanted, I wanted to go racing and yep. I can't afford to do it on my own. And, and I, I thought, um, yeah, they were running a good team and, and there wasn't many teams running at the time. Mm. Uh, and, Yam- and to be honest, Yamaha were pretty committed to the FX series and I... And when I'd left Australia, they sort of chose the FX series at the time. Yeah. And in my mind, in my mind, Honda were going to stay with the Australian Championship as long as possible. Yep. And I thought that's that's all that's where I want to be. Yeah. And um, that's funny when I when I rang to try and get some Hondas, like there was people that said to me, "Hey, this is probably not going to be the most competitive bike in the FX rules." And I and I was I said I don't I don't mind I can't one I can't afford to go and buy, you know, spend a heap of money, um, and the Honda was the most affordable bike regardless. Like, um, if you want to do if you want to go racing on the cheap, the Honda was the, the best bike to have. Yep. Because it's easy to ride. Um, the parts were the same for a lot of years. Yeah. <laughs> um, with well, the bikes fairly similar. For, yeah, you, for could, a you yep. could buy a couple of year old bike. Yep. And. Um, that's what it's sort of, That's one thing that has ground my gears over the years. Is um, look, I'll say it, the bike. I don't believe the bike was the best bike on the grid all the time. I think we had a really great team around us and a lot of experience, which counted for a lot. Yep. But you got people saying to you, "Yeah, you're on the best bike." Okay, that's fair enough. But it's also the cheapest bike, yep. and I'm the only Honda on the grid. Yep. So what's going on there? Yeah, there's a reason. But um, what you did have, I I feel. And I might be wrong. Is an extremely well balanced bike. Yeah, like yeah. it's actually a good that's, balanced that's bike. That's what I mean. The bike, the bike, it's a great chassis. Yeah, and it still is with a new bike, luckily. And also, you've got like um, a team that have been together for years and years since they are the guys who introduced that model bike in '08 mm. to the series. So, like, it's it, and that counts for a lot. For sure. Like you can't just go and get a bike and expect that it'll be good. It doesn't matter what bike it is. Like, yeah. like you can go and buy. Troy Bayless's Ducati or, yep. you know, whatever it is, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to ride a good, even if you're a good rider. That's so, right. Um, yeah, but – and that's what I, I – I, I just – I knew that that was the team to be on. Because at yeah. that time, was it still MotoLogic? Yep. So Paul had MotoLogic still at that time, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Paul was – so how it worked out was Honda agreed to – they had the SP2 model coming out then yes. with a bit of bling on it. Yep. And, um, and Honda had – Honda had agreed to build me one of them for the year, yep. 
and um, and then flog it off at the end of the year to pay for it. And and I was going to get a couple of thousand dollar parts budget, yep. and and then that's it. And and what happened was the bike wasn't ready yet at all. Like Paul physically didn't have the parts to build my bike because he had he had uh, Josh Hook and Jamie Stofer, yep. and then um, some some issues that had had happened with the team that Wayne was with the previous year and that and that was done so I think from memory um Link International or, or Modal or, or one of them guys um backed Wayne they put him into the team so yeah. he was a third rider as such mm. um and uh and so that was three bikes um for one year yep and then they couldn't build my bike and um and he's in a bit of a predicament but Josh Hook had crashed at the World Superbike Support Race and uh, and hurt himself yep and so I, the first round of the championship, I actually filled in for Josh Hook. So that's why I started my racing back in a factory team because yep. I probably wasn't even the first pick at that time, if you that makes there. sense. It was just that I needed they had commit, committed to give me a bike, yep. and um and and they didn't have one built for me, and um, I was so lucky. A guy from Canberra named Damian Murphy was a, a mad racer. He was racing flat out, and he had Hondas. Yep, and um and and uh, I, I rang him and just said, mate, you haven't been riding that Fireblade for a while. Like, do you mind if I take it and have, have a ride on it? Because wow. I'm, I'm going racing and it looks, it's looking like I'm not even going to get to ride my bike because it's not built. Yep. And he was just like, mate, when are we going? He was oh, really? He, I was so lucky. Yeah. So yeah, he, he actually came to the track with me. I'd done four or five days on his bike and yep. and, um, and and that's where you're – and that's probably where I was – I had a different mindset but – like that, so Damien's bike was a great bike. He'd he'd spent money on it. It had good suspension, yep. good exhaust. We had good tyres in it, but I couldn't get around the track fast on it. <laughs> really? I I was fast-ish, but yep. I wasn't going to win anything. I was I was getting down. I'd got down to where I was probably a second or so off where I needed to be to be winning. Yeah. And um and so I think for Damien too. It probably gave him a bit of closure on, like he'd stop racing at that stage, and he was one of the guys that was always pretty good, like he was always competitive, and so then he he sees me get off a bike, off his bike, I go to the race bike, yeah. I, I was on pole position that weekend, wow, and he's probably thinking, shit, maybe if I had some good help, yep. I probably would have been a bit better, and and but also for me, I'm like, shit, I've just got off, I've been slugging away on this bike, I yeah. crashed it. I'm putting tyres in it, and now I've got on on Freebie's bike with um, all that experience. And there's no parts on that bike that I can't buy. Like, yeah, you can buy that bike, but, but you can't buy the brains. Yeah, and you got yep. Freebie and and Clarky, who was end up being with me. He was Hookie's mechanic at the crew chief at the time. Yep, he ended up being with me, and then um, Warren um, Monson, Monson mm. who worked for Phil for years and still does, who's an absolute guru that no one even really knows about probably. Yeah. Um, you know, in the road racing industry he's well known, but he's a he Phil's taught him everything he knows. So you've got Freebie, Warren and um and Clarkie in the one team. It was just like, mate, that bike was trust. he was yep. working. Yeah. So yeah, that taught me a lot and, and So um, is that much of a difference? Yeah. Just the bike's just so balanced. Yeah. And and everything especially when there's three smart guys there, like they weren't working as with me as such at the start, but like um, like Clark, he was good. He was, he was a hard nut and, and, you know, I even got the feeling when I first met him he didn't like me because he doesn't like anyone, that bugger. Yeah, right. And, um, <laughs> but he obviously, he seen I was having a go yeah. and, he, you know, on a Saturday night before the race on a Sunday, he'd, he'd have a bit, he'd put a bit of thought into my bike and anyway, the bike was, you know, my comments, they'd always heard, like, They've been with Honda that long. Yeah. Like, yeah, the bike's doing this here. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Right. We know what to do with that. Wow. So it was like that sort of thing. Whereas, yeah, like I'm riding around with Damien and like, let's let's pull the forks through five mil, see what that does. Like, which is, yeah. you know, it's all well and good. You've got to do that stuff. But like, it's easier when, you, when you're with a guy that knows. Just knows every single, yeah, every part about it. Yeah. So, so you got in there. How long was Hookie out for? So he missed... I think just the first and second round. Was your bike ready after that? I don't know, maybe just the first round. Yeah. No, so what happened was, well, that, that happened. Yep. I, I, I'd done that race and and um, it's funny, like I, there was like 30 on the grid for that round. 
Wow. And I think on the first on the Friday practice, I'd have to check, but I think I was 18th. Yep. Um, after the first day on the Friday practice. So is this your first race back? Yeah. Actual first one back too. We done a club race a weekend before, and yep. um and we were slow, um, but I was mixing it with well. Because the group was small, I was getting off with Wayne and Jamie and I was yep. hanging on-ish. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And um, uh, so on the Saturday, I was qualified wherever it was, fifth or sixth row. But because the Saturday is all about getting a lap time, I was chasing every time. Wow. And they're out the front. It was the first weekend that everyone had experienced this rule of where you sort of got to do a lap time. Or in the last lap of the last race, I'd sort of – got past my group and I had a group of five guys in front of me and I've just bloody Chasing. pulled a lap out of the hat. I've come into pit lane and my mate that was helping me mechanic, he's like, oh, that to me. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> and um, I was with Wayne and Jamie or yep. one of them. They were with me and I'm thinking, nah, he, lo- he looks like he's looking at me, but he can't be. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I put it on pole position. Yeah. And, um, so I've, On that last lap? On that last lap, so the, the Sunday is the big day. Like, the, you know, you want to win the Saturday, but the Sunday is the main championship. Yep. And, like, I was so rusty. Like, on my own I was okay yep. or when I'm chasing someone, but I was too scared to let the brake off. I could not pass anyone. Wow. And, like, I think Wakefield, there was three races. I think the Wakefield at races, the Saturday and Sunday at Malala, that's, like, nine races. I think I finished fourth or fifth, like, every race mm. I didn't crash or anything but I just couldn't pass anyone but then yeah something clicked me worth of the year and and um, I ended up breaking through and, and getting a, a few wins at the end of the year and just came back yeah so after Wakefield they decided how about we just put you in the factory Honda yep. outfit and um, and then they carted the bikes around for me and, and it's a lot easier yeah and so I just got myself to the races and paid my tie bill and my hotel wow. bill and entry and all that kind of jazz and so you're still doing all that yeah. At that point. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. It was cool. And Good way to come back to it. Yeah. Yeah. It was because I was doing it. I was doing it because I. You want to race? I wanted bikes. to do it. And yeah. yeah. And you realise how lucky lucky you are when you're getting paid twenty grand a year or two hundred grand a year or yeah. more or whatever. You know, the guys are making millions. But you realise that, man, it's such a, it's so, good. It's addictive. To be able to yeah, it's addictive and and it's such a luxury to be able to race a motorbike like um, for whatever wage it is, mm. like just to be able to do it at someone's expense, it's, it's a huge honour. So what year is this? This is uh It's 14. 14, yeah. So 15, you were into the squad. Yeah. Again, you actually got back in full yeah. time, hey? Yeah, it was Jamie Stouffer and I and uh, Hockey went overseas and... Um, what happened to Wayne? Wayne went, Wayne went to Yamaha. Back to Yamaha. Yamaha had the new R1 and he, the oh, grass yeah. is greener, so he left. <laughs> wow. The brand new R1. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that was... Like I think for Honda, for me at that stage, I was fresh, so I was like, I want to win. Yeah. And like, and the team I was in wanted to win too, but they that was 2015, and they'd had that bike since 08. Jamie had been on it since I think 2012 or something. He had a long time. Yeah, yeah he was there a lot, and um, he was such an asset for the team because he's just a, he's another guy. He's another guy that in the future he will be saying that guy's yeah. he, he knows his shit and um. And so he was selling the bike well, but like for him, like, yeah, he's on a control tyre. He's on the bikes. The bikes have had, you know, restrictions put into them the, and the bike's not as competitive as it was. And, yeah. and but I'm there with all this motivation because it's, you know, one, we've got the, you know, I'm, I'm starting up again. So I've got, I'm just wanting to win. Yep. But then their motivation, I think, was the new R1 because there was big hype about it. So like. It was huge hype, that one. Yeah. Going into the series, like Freebie and Clarkie and, and Jamie, they were like. Yeah, we gotta we we can't we gotta win. We gotta we've it's gotta got to beat happen. that bike. Yeah. But um the pro old Jamie, he was flying at the start of the year yeah. and um he high sided himself to the moon at Licky Heights in the um Phillip Island support races. Right. And um broke his hip, uh pelvis or something, yeah. Mm. So Because that would be pretty close to when the year that he had the start line. So that was the year after. Was that sixteen, yeah. was it? Yeah. Yeah, when that was scary too. Mike and I checked up and he hit us. Yeah. That was, so was yeah. that 16, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, 16, I think. Yeah. That was yeah. your title year? Yeah, 16. It yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And that was... That was that was scary. Like, yeah, that, probably. Yeah, that could what have happened? been... So we all... Come, I think I must have been fourth, Jonesy third, I think. Mm. 
and someone in first and second sort of checked up or something. Yep. Or, or like at the time I was like, Mike's bloody – and Mike gives me shit about this all the time. <laughs> I'm like, nah, Mike, the Ducati got a buck up and was um, – Jonesy was out of it and backed off and yep. I had to check up. I don't know why I said that, but anyway, yeah. So then um, I think Jamie was behind me. So it must have been Jonesy. Jonesy checks up. I've checked up into him yep. and and we're, we're first lap and, and like me and Jamie and them Hondas at Phillip Island, we're just tucking everything in. So he was just looking yep. at my back wheel, I think, and he's just gone straight into me. Wow. And I, like it, sh- it threw me as well. Like I, there's a photo. And it looks like I've looked back to see who I've taken out. I actually didn't know someone crashed. Yeah. I've had the hit, and I've looked back, and then like thought, "Geez, that bloke, that's lucky." Like, yeah. I didn't see anyone, and um, it chunked my tire. It took a big chunk out of my oh, tire. Really? So straight when I come into turn one, the things wobbling, and um, yeah, and then that like ripped all his arm, and yeah, it was yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah. Because midway down the straight, Phillip Island, cranking yeah. along. So. Oh, yeah, and he didn't even touch the grass. He yeah. just slid from 220k an hour. Yeah. Yeah, that was full on. Yeah. So 15, was it a good year? Yeah. Yeah? It was... Like getting that feel back. Yeah, yeah I, I felt like I was just a better rider. Like at that stage, I hadn't, until that end of 14, I hadn't won in Australia on a super bike. Yeah. I hadn't been the guy that was the favourite, I guess. Yeah. And, um, and, and I was... I had a good year. I, I think I controlled the championship pretty well, and and um, yeah, end up it ended up coming down to the wire. Like um, everyone thought I was choking at the last round because I was just going backwards in the last race. And where was the last one? It was it um, Eastern Creek. Yeah, okay. And I, I knew I was on from that. We had a really bad test. I crashed and I was slow. Yep. But we rolled out on the Friday, and I think my first flying lap I broke that record for FX. Yep. And I knew I was going well. We dominated the first race on the Saturday and on the Saturday night. But then the last race, I chunked a tyre. And no one had been chunking tyres, really, at Eastern Creek. It's only Phillip Island, you've got to worry about that. Yep. And I'm going around, this thing's getting real sideways on me. And, and um, so I passed, so Jamie rode like a legend. He was just at the front bulldozing everyone. Yep. Every time someone passed in the straight, he was just straight in underneath them. Yep. And he held Wayne back. And if Wayne had have beaten him, I would have lost. And and if I hadn't passed Glenn Allardyne on the last lap, I would have lost. I think I won by one point. And, um, yeah, come down to the last corner because I think I passed. I think I passed Glenn in the last section of corners. Even like, I just just snuck, snuck through, and he was on the beamer, so he was coming past me down the straight. Yep. It must have been earlier in the lap because he was coming. I was getting towed up down the straight every lap, and um, and I was going around Corporate Hill. The things bouncing and everywhere, and we got in, and I. I, I thought, oh, what am I going to say if I lose this? Like it looks like I've choked. Yeah, but, yeah. But you won it. Cause, yeah, but I just got across the line. So I that got was in an FX championship. Yeah. Yep. And that was fifteens. Yeah. 15s. yeah. Wow. So you got 15 for the FX, 16 for the ASBK. Yeah. Back and straight then, back into it. Yeah, and then 17. I was. Look, I I, I just want to make sure everyone knows. I, I believe Josh was the best rider that year. But like it come down to mechanical at the end of the year. Like I was I was close to winning that championship. Yep. And um. Yeah, so it's been I've been right at the pointy end for a few years, and then um, last year was just oh man, man, I wish I won that. Oh. That is uh, yeah. that's I don't know. Like you, you're you're a fair historian of the sport too. Like you 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 can go back each year and talk about different mm. things, and that last year was probably one of the best I've seen. Yeah, it was I cool. Think. It's just yeah. so hard to talk about it in a positive way, even though I always do because yeah. you're the loser of the battle. Yeah, yeah. But like we were just going tooth and nail. Oh, time. Yeah. It was good. It was good. Yeah. So it was, um, yeah. Like no one knew who was going to win. Like it was no, and, and it was honestly, and I think Wayne, uh, I think Mike would say the same thing. Yeah. We both genuinely thought we were going to win that race. Like yep. I thought after warm up, I was like, I'm the better rider today. Like I can definitely win this. Like whereas going into it, it's hard. You don't know. Like um, he had a lot of form last year. Mm. Like in qualifying, he was exceptional, and um, and he races well, and he's. And he's pretty rock solid as far as mentally. Like he's mentally, pretty, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was like, shit, how, how am I going to do this? Like, but um, we fired up really well as a team on that weekend. Like, um, like Marcus Jodo last year, at the start of the year, I I didn't have a good feeling, honestly, about him, and yep. and um, and it didn't really feel like a team. And and to be fair, I probably didn't give a good enough chance. Yeah. And um, like throughout the year, I I actually. 
I actually had to apologise to him and not, not because I believe I was being an, an arsehole to him. Yeah. I just, I thought I needed more, I thought he should be giving more respect. And then I realised, you know, what was I like when I was a what kid? What am I talking about? Yeah. yeah. But, um, but wow. he was, but like he was getting going good and, and I think he, I think he, I think he matured a lot last year too. Yep. But then when we got to that last round at the test before that, we were really communicating well and we're actually out on a track together yep. and and Clark, he probably gave him, my, my crew chef definitely gave him more of a chance as well. Yeah. And, um, and we went into that race as a, it felt like a team. And like, and we got to, we, he was going really fast and we got to the qualifying session and honestly, he just come up to me and said, Troy, I want to help you. So yeah. when you're going to the new tyre, we'll go out together and you just run at me. Yeah. And um, I got him by one tenth. Like he, oh, geez. he should have been on pole because he was, we crossed the line and I was like on my limit. I think I went to pole position at the time or second. I'd definitely done a PB lap time. And I've gone through turn one, through turn two, and I thought, no, nah, that's enough. I, I, I'm, I, don't need to, I don't need to do more than that. Yep. And um, he's kept the hammer into it, and he's crossed the first segment uh, sector two tenths up on a lap before, and then he crashed it. Uh. Yeah. But he still qualified, I think, fifth. And, and then the races rode, he definitely made a breakthrough of it. So that helped. Like, that was a massive help because... On our package at that track, it's the worst track in Australia um, to not have big horsepower. Yeah. Because it's a downhill run. You just, you cross that hill out of the turn 12 or whatever it is, and it's, it's just a drag race down a hill. There's no yeah. real wheel stand. It just goes. And um, and so I got to start on the front row then. I, I could dictate the turns a bit. But um, unlucky for me, Jonesy got ripper starts. And then, yeah. but once we learned as the race went on, as soon as the grip was going out of that Ducati, he was losing a lot of time off the last turn, so much so he sort of, it's like the throttles weren't opening or something, and then when they would, it'd come across the hill and he'd get a wobble up in a wheel stand. And I was just, a few times there I rolled straight onto his back wheel and one lap there I sat in the draft and then dived him into turn one. Because you don't see a fire blade do that. Like, I, no discredit it to your current employer because <laughs> you've got a new bike now, but it's very rare to see a, to yeah. sit in the... In the slipstream, even didn't yeah, it? but you know. I think that was probably refreshing for everyone because sure we all like he was passing me in a turn two on the brakes, which is like, hang on a minute, this is the opposite here. Like that's right. All of a sudden, we're passing each other down the straight, and yeah. we're passing each other down through the corners. Yep. And I'm like, well, it's fair, it's fair play then. This is it. It's like, on. Best man's going to win it. And so. you're both like you're both mentally tough competitors. I said this to Mike too, but mentally tough competitors. Both at your peak of fitness. Yeah. Both bikes looked incredibly level at the day. Yeah. Like no, who, who's going to win? You know, it, yeah. was a, it was a, it was a good race. Yeah. Like I, like everyone's jokes. I, ah, like, oh, geez, you just went a bit wide down into, into out of corporate hill into turn nine. I was like, no, nah, I didn't lose it there. <laughs> I, that was that was never going to happen that, yep. that section. But he was, um, he was really strong up into that turn eight left hand just as you come into the left yeah so i was getting out of that corner better than him but he was he was actually on the brakes better than i was into that corner and i was worried that he was gonna jam up underneath me there and he had the he had the horsepower to drag me out of there so i just kept it i I just braked on the inside then done the old scando out of the outside and (laughs) scandinavian flick and then try to bring it back and and he just set me up he just used the the good braking he had into there and then he he dialed up underneath me and held me on his hip so I couldn't do anything. Yeah, you're stuck right. at that point. Well played. Checkmate almost. Yeah, it was, yeah. you know, I think. and Yeah, it was huge. It was, yeah. it was a big one. What Have you watched it back? Oh, yeah, I've watched it back. Like, you know, it's a good, it's a good race. Yeah. Like for, sorry, mate, if you're here, but it, yeah. was, a, it was a fantastic race. Yeah, though, it so. was. The other race, my, probably last year, I had two of my favourite races of all, of ever, that really? I've ever had. And not that it was probably anything that great to everyone that watched it, but at Phillip Island, in race two at the end of the year when, you know, things are getting down to the pointy end of the championship. Yep. I was doing my best laps I've ever done around the island. Wow. Wayne, in my mind, is probably the best we've got around violent. that track, Yeah, I believe. There's guys that go good on weekends, but he's always fast. And um, to, to be able to catch him and then, um, and then pull it off and get a win over him, that was... That was my favourite win ever. Like, yep. and and then that was the point where I was like, all right, we're we're in this. Like, him and Jones had had an altercation down at 
um, Honda, yep. and Jonesy had given me 25 points, and I was I was leaving there in the hunt then. So, yeah, that was uh, yeah. that was a big weekend that one. Yeah, what? Why is um why is Wayne so good at Phillip Island? A lot of laps there, obviously. Yeah, he's but he he I, has I got I something know. at Phillip Island. Yeah, hey? yeah. I I think he's got a lot of experience there. Yeah, it suits his riding style. I think the way he sets up a bike suits Phillip Island. Yep. I mean, sorry, the way he rides it, he's, he's one of the few guys you can guarantee that no matter what the condition, what the make of bike is, what tyres he's going to be there. He's going to do a fast lap. Um, but, yeah, at that track, I think he just, he really, he always looks after the rear tyre, for one. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, he just, he knows how to carry speed. Yeah. And it's an aggressive track on a tyre, so I guess it's one of the things that you need to need yeah. to look after it. Yeah. Who's, who's been your toughest competitor? I think Wayne. Yeah. Yeah, definitely as a guy. Definitely Wayne. Sorry, if we're talking about road racing, like, yeah. like when I talk, when I think about my toughest competitor, like it's almost like Darren Herrick when I was coming right. out of juniors. Yeah. Because we, like he was just, it's like that guy was just mentally unbreakable. Mm. He just always got a good start. He always rode really well, and like, and he always played fair but aggressive. Yeah. So like he told me a lot about about. Um, the mental side of racing, I guess, because we had different, we had similar styles. We looked like twins on the bike, pretty much, mm. the way we rode. Yep. Um, so he was probably one of my toughest competitors, because I think too, because I was young and I, you know, a bit bit eager and nervous, and um, but definitely as the years have gone on, like in ASPK, I've had some really good races with Wayne. Um, yeah. Now, now there's a lot of other fast guys, like like last year with Mike. Yep. Um, if it's going to be like that for another few years, it's going to be tough. But yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. You know, as a, as a spectator, it's 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 a good time. Yeah, and then like like the year getting the racing as Troy Bayless for a year, that was pretty special. Like for sure. Yeah, I, we had like he was super competitive. Like man, he yeah, like just <laughs> Troy's a competitor. Yeah, he's like a it's just he's like a like a young kid. Yeah. He's like he's like Ollie Bayless now. Yeah, he's like yeah. 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 You know what they're like? They just young guys just jamming in there and go for it. And um, and he just races every lap of the race at eleven tenths. I would I would hate to have hate to have ridden against him at, when he was my age. Yeah. So yeah, that, was, that was pretty cool. He's a um, he's like a born competitor. Yeah. Isn't he? He's, he really is. When did you become like a competitor? Have um, you always been a com- like a I've always, like, like my parents say, I always, like, love to compete. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I, I think that's what I always had. Like, maybe even when I was a kid, I probably wasn't the fastest on the track even, but I was always pretty competitive. Yeah. yeah. What about an athlete? When did you become an athlete? Um, like, probably, now you're... Yeah, so it wasn't until later. I've always been active. Yeah. Played soccer when I was a kid, all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. But I broke my arm at Newcastle that year in 05. Yeah. And and I it was just going into the off season. I just landed myself a good contract and I had money in the bank and yep. didn't have to work and I just turned eighteen <laughs> mm. or whatever I was eighteen or whatever it was nineteen and um, yeah I just didn't take things serious enough yep. and when I got back on the bike I really understood what it was like to be unfit right. and I didn't have a lot of strength and and from then on I um I really knuckled down and yeah probably. Yeah, then last two years at KTM, I was training a lot with the yep. bicycle in the gym, and and then later in life, I've become super competitive with the push bike. Probably that year I had off on the motorbike, yeah. that was my go-to. I was I was probably <laughs> the local Goulburn cycling club, cycling club pretty didn't, didn't didn't like my competitive my competitiveness all yeah. the time, but yeah. yeah, but that was my go-to for getting the edge, getting the competitive spirit out. Because you were like. You're in an elite level now, cycling, eh? Like, yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, at a national, at a in a in the Australian Championship, yep. I can be pretty competitive. You'll be there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Wow. How much do you cycle now? Too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, throughout the year. So last year was my one of my biggest years. Yeah. And um, like I averaged, I think I averaged 500k a week. Mm-hmm. But there's some year, some months where I don't do many k's at all. But like in December and November, November and September last year, because the Australian Championship is a one-off race on the sixth of January or around that time every yep. year. Um, so yeah, November, December it works perfect. We, we're not racing. Yep. Um, I do a huge block of training, and then um, then from that race in January, then I try and get myself physically 
fit in the gym and stuff like that and then went back on the bike and it's sort of like I know I don't have an off season because I train really hard November yep. to December but I love cycling like it's it's a proper passion it's a pure, it's a pure passion for me yep. so I'm enjoying that few months and then I go to that race and it's fun it's a lot of fun for me whereas the pros are going to that race like oh geez I've got a race in early January then go to Europe and do the season the season comes up. yeah yep. so so I do that then I've got January um, pretty pretty cruisy with the bike because there's not a lot of racing or riding happening yep. and then we start that official test in February so yep. um, I've got a good base fitness and I'm really lucky <laughs> and mountain biking as well you did that like obviously you just did the Hidden Vale yeah. 100 yeah Soul destroying. I see your forget. I see your thing to then soul destroying. I'm like, if yeah. Troy Herf, I, says I think my soul left my body. <laughs> yeah. If you're also saying that your soul's left your body, and I know the level of fitness you're at, I'm like, man, this must be one of the worst things ever. Yeah. Was it hard? Uh, like, just genuinely. It was super hard, and and I made it hard for myself, obviously, because I was trying to go well. But yeah. there's a guy there, um, Jared Graves, who's a just a huge talent in the mountain bike world. Right. BMX Olympian downhill rider multiple world cup wins yeah and um he'd been doing a few road races on the push bike yep and um we were having a chat after one of the races and and um i knew the hidden vale was coming up and he said oh i'm um i'm real keen on the on this hidden vale race i haven't done many mar- haven't done a marathon before yeah i've been i'm training hard for it and and um it sort of got me thinking i'm like oh yeah i'd I'd like to. I'd like to try and yep. have a go against him. See how he goes because he's in tip-top shape and he's he's a world-class athlete. And then Troy and Benny Henry and Mike Jones are doing it as well. Yep. And um, so I went out and done a Wednesday. I hadn't ridden the mountain bike in a while actually, but I've been training hard on the roadie. Went out on a Wednesday with Benny, and he's like, "Oh, yeah, we'll just do an easy one today." Well, Benny had the form of his life. He's just flying. Troy crashed. I crashed. Yep. Bent my front disc. But he scuffed myself up and. Well, this is just before just before the race on the Sunday. Yeah, and then um, I was okay for the race, but in the race, I I tried to ride at Jared's level. Yeah, and at about seventy k, I was with I think I was a minute and a half down, which is not far in a in a long race. Yeah, but I lost fifteen minutes in the last twenty five k. Wow, my lights went out completely. I was delirious. I nearly got beaten actually. The guys were only a few minutes behind me that um, finished behind me. But So what happens at that point? Like, do you just turn off? You just go to – your body just runs out. So what happens – what happened for me was yep. you got food, but your body's – it can't it's it can't tolerate the, the gels and any food because your gut's just getting rattled around, you're getting dehydrated. Yep. And um, so then you can't eat, but you need food because you've got no energy. And then um, it just gets to a point where you've got no power. So every time you get an incline, you're just spinning. Yep. But then going down the hills, my, my body's just that fatigued. I couldn't even flow down the hills and you just, you, you're hurting so wow. bad. It was top five most brutal things I've done, I reckon. Because yeah. you've ridden everywhere. I've done on, on motorbike, cycling, yep. mountain biking. I've even had a crack at a 24-hour mountain bike before. And, and like, because it's 100K, I know it sounds weird, but it's sort of like a, it's, it's still a race where if you're an elite cyclist or a mountain biker, Sprint. you actually go pretty fast. Like, yeah. yeah. And, um, but yeah, that last 20K, I definitely didn't go fast. Mm. He won it and he was, it was nice to ride against someone like Jared and see how impressive he is. But yeah, man. And how did fine. he go? Did he, did he burn? He said he felt good at the end. He said he, to- he said he was happy with how he paced it. Timed it, yeah. And he, he come home really strong. Yep. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, and you got second overall. I got then. second, yeah, yep. yeah, which I'm stoked about. There's, oh, yeah. There's a couple of really handy young riders there and, and um, yeah, it was good. Troy's turned his hand to it, hey? Yeah. Like, Mate, he's oh, just an athlete, that guy, like, yep. and competitive as, like. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I would hate to have gone to that motorbike race or racing a, a superbike race against him when he was my age because yep. I've heard stories that he used to get on the push bike, um, like cycle with, with pros and, and where he lived he. I'm pretty sure there was a point there in his career where he was a real handy cyclist, like um, could have probably yep. um, had a crack at that if he wanted because he's super lean. He, he yeah. just dances on the pedals up a climb. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a, um, yeah, he's definitely got it. Did you, ever, did you ever look at that? Did you ever look at going to like professional cycling? Not, you, not really. I, do you just enjoy it so much? I just enjoy it so much. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. yeah, one year I'd done well at nationals and got in the early breakaway and, and got a bit of media out of it and... And um and there was not not big proteins, but there was you know, I had the chance to ride with the team and but yep. it sort of 
yeah, put it this way, if it was the same level as riding as an Australian Superbike team, I was I was always going to stay racing a motorbike. Yep. But um, I actually don't know how they train that hard throughout the year. I guess if you're on a big paycheck, it'd be easy to get out of bed in the morning. But yeah. like um, yeah, it's a it's a brutal sport, um, cycling and, and mountain biking, and they they're on the bike a lot, thirty yep. hours a week probably. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of time, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of lot of um, lot of burn time. Yeah. How how many times do you get to go to the AIS? Not many. Um, only a couple of times with the with the, the rider development. The rider development. I'd love to yeah. go now and do some of the testing. Good to see where you're at. Because I'd love to see what my 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 VO two and stuff is compared yep. to a you know an elite rower or elite cyclist or. Yep. Because we don't get there. There is some people in the sport that aren't fit, but the guys that are fit, yep. they're proper fit. Like yeah. A, yeah. Especially in motocross. Like um the, the the average motocrosser is really fit, um the and the I think the average road racer is probably not fit enough, because they still don't believe that you need it. But it's definitely in the last few years people are realising that it helps to be fit. Like yep. just your, I don't even know the name of it. Your your like your yeah how you function, how your yep. brain functions. It, it, Cognitive. It, yeah, Cognitive exactly. Function. Yeah, yep. yeah. You need to be fit mm. really. Like um and you need to know how to make really quick decisions um under huge load and and huge stress because like the the top you know the top four at the moment you know um yourself mike wayne yeah probably ryan starring yeah oh he's as yeah, well he's, it'd be you four guys would be the mm. you know the elite road racing currently yeah are all super super fit yeah brian's one guy that's just brutally fit yeah yeah or mm -hmm. yeah the guys in the card in the cardio side Cardio, yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but like strength-wise and yeah. and just um, general, just general fitness. Yeah. He's extremely impressive. Yeah. Yeah, it's an it's an interesting thing to see because um, the sports evolved into that now. Yeah. You know, like it, it wasn't sort of ever. You know. Nah. So. No, yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. What's been your favourite bike along the way? Um, favourite bike. It would be. Um, the bike I, I won the championship in 2018, that that'll, that'll go down as my favourite yeah. bike. But that KX500 I raced when I was a junior, when I came out of juniors, that was so cool. Like, Do you know where yeah. it's at? Um, I don't know. No, I don't know. No, I think Tom sold it like shortly after, which yeah. I, I don't actually know. He may not have sold it. Yeah. But um, that and then like the, the KDM Supermoto bike in 08, yeah. them three bikes were just... They were pretty special bikes, like yep. um, the, the the 500 because you know as a dirt track fan you grow up like yeah men ride them that's yeah. what, that's what I want to <laughs> ride a men's bike yeah. yeah and the the KTM because it was a special bike yeah. that you you can't buy it was it was really impressive it's built for you yeah, yeah. Yep. and then um and then like the way I won the championship in 18 it was something I'll never forget so yeah yeah so it brings a memory to you yeah that bike was when we rode out of pit lane on that bike it was always good yeah yeah. It, it it did seem like a good package just to watch, yeah. you know, as a spectator. Yeah. What about your new one? How's that? I think hopefully in a year's time I'll be yeah I'll be saying the same thing. I, I think, yeah. I mean, it's definitely good. I, there's no yeah. question. It's good. So you've done a few laps on it. Yeah. 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 We're happy. we're extremely competitive on it, yeah. and um, at the moment it's hard to get a yardstick because I've been on Pirelli for a long time and now we're on Michelin. Yeah. Right. Um, but the the Michelin, yeah, I've been. Like I've equaled the lap record out there um, a couple of times now, yep. and um, and I think I know for sure if I'd done a time trial right now, I'd go faster over race distance than I have been in the past. Yep. We just got to work out how fast James is going now, don't we? Because he's going faster as well. So yeah, um, yeah. As far as comparing this package against last year's package, we're hands down definitely better than we yep. were this time last year at Morgan Park, but. Um, We'll wait and see. It's definitely faster. I can tell you that. That's good. Like, um, it just revs like crazy. Like, and um, I've ridden with a lot of guys on the track out there. Um, yep. And sort of, you come out of the corner and you just sort of, even with Jonesy and um, Young Ollie, I've yep. ridden. I've actually been with them on the track, and and I can go toe to toe with the Ducati now, right. even though it's it's a different track there because it's you know you got undulations and and short straights, so it's not actually a drag race, but. Mm. Um, there's certain areas on the track where I knew I would lose ground last year and, and now I can just accelerate on the wheel. So, yeah, it's pretty That's exciting. Cool. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it sort of brings a new um, – it's a new era again. Yeah. You know, as long as we can get to race them. 
I know, right? So that's that's the big part. But hopefully, uh, Taylor and Bend and what was it? Was it Winton? Yeah, double header at Winton. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be that'll be good. Taylor and Bend because it's got a big straight, so I'll be able to come onto the straight and that'll be a test and just see exactly where we're at. How'd you go at Taylor and Bend last year? That was the worst round. I was thinking Weird about track. it. Like that was the worst round I've had um, in a long time. We just didn't get going. Good track, um, but it's a very it's a great track. Very yeah. um, the year before, I had a great time there. Mm. But um, yeah, we had a terrible weekend there. That was probably we realised we needed to do something um, with the bike at that stage. Like we were just, I think. So what had happened was we we gone to Phillip Island, where it's a track where my information's cloudy with a bike because I just always seemed to struggle there in the past up yep. at that point. And then we went to Wakefield, where like to be fair, at times you could put a couple of wooden planks in the thing, and I was I find a way to make it work because yep. I'd done so many laps around there yep. and I think we changed the bike a lot there and it went well but we, had a, we hadn't have actually made the bike better if that makes sense yep. and then we went to Tail and Bend and Chase it's a fast tail. flowing track and we just chased, chased the tail yeah yep. and Mike really fired up that weekend yeah he did he did um, he had a good weekend there yeah. eh? tell me this last year Paul was with Ducati yeah that must have been a bit weird because you had a long yeah. relationship yeah, you know, it was weird. So you had Clarky obviously still in your side. Yeah. So when I was with Freebie, yep. Freebie was working um, as crew chief for J- uh, Jamie. Mm. So I was always working. They, Jamie, uh, Jamie and Freebie and Sean and I always helped each other. Yep. But um, we went our own direction, and he and so did they. So I, I'd only really worked with Clarky. I hadn't actually worked with Freebie yet. Yep. Um, like. Yeah, when he started working with them guys, I was like, oh, okay. Well, that, this that, is different. That's different, but yeah. with Troy and that, and, I, and obviously, you know, he's good. So yep. um, that's, yeah, that's scary because Troy Bayless and, and Freebie working together and then Jonesy and Freebie. And, and then um, and then when Clarkie decided he was going to um, finish up, like like I, yeah, like I didn't go after Freebie. I was too scared. I didn't want to be that guy. I knew that I needed someone good yep. and we we're trying our best to find someone to work with and, and um, the way it worked out, Freebie was um, looking to to do something different, and yep. and it, it just worked out. So, um, but it's been it's sort of weird. Like we we know each other really well, and we're good friends, and and he he's done so much for me in the past. But then working as a team, it was weird. We didn't know each other and how we wow. worked, and and um, it definitely hasn't been like easy. But now, because I've been with Clarky for so long, it's been a, a, a hard transition. But these last through COVID, we've had a lot of experience together now. So we've yep. been we've been taking the bike out together and working together. And like uh, my information is now better for him. Like because like every rider is different. It's getting like, that bond, isn't it? Yeah. Like I'm sure Mike explains things different. I I explained it, and so does Troy, and so did Jamie before that. And and so he's got to learn my language, I guess, and I've got to yep. learn his language. So that's where it's that's where the young young fellas need to realise that. Um, it doesn't matter how good you are or you think you are and how good you think your bike is, that, yeah. that third piece of the puzzle is having a team around you. Having a team and having um, being able to communicate Yeah. as well, I guess that's a big part in it, being yeah. able to actually say what, what you're feeling. Yeah. I guess that's a big, big part. And a lot of people, I guess, when they're younger don't know, should I be saying no. this or not? Yeah. I, I and when guess. you're young, you don't know. Like, it's hard. If you ride a Yamaha or a Honda yeah. and I ride a Honda or a Yamaha and you're half a second faster than me a lap, yeah. then when you're young, you feel bad to say something like yeah. like with Josh when when I was teammates with Josh and even when I was riding um his bike yep. but going a lot slower than he was the previous year I didn't want to complain about it because like the bike's capable of doing that lap time yeah so like you don't necessarily it's not that you don't know you're just too scared to sort of say much but then as you get older you realize that look it's just that There's bike must be capable of that lap time yep. but with me and that bike right now it's not working so we need to change it yep and and <laughs> yeah. everyone I, I guess at some point you realise everyone's got the same goal too. Yeah. Like everyone's there to win and yeah. if you talk more, you're going to probably win more. Sort yeah. Of thing. So yeah. to everyone that's watched this too, the camera's just cut out a bit ago. We've we've chatted for a fair while. Nah, sorry, so, mate. No, nah, no, nah, all good, the, mate. All the boys good. in the team are going to love this because they're always saying I'm like an old man and love it, love having a yarn. So. Oh, that's good, mate. It's it's yeah. actually been awesome. I what try, do, try what do we see out of you in the future? Hopefully, hopefully a lot of Australian Superbike Championships. Yep, that's the plan. <laughs> Yeah, continue I, racing. Yeah, I, I want to. Like, I feel like I'm in my prime now, and um, and uh, like I'm still taking a lot of risk and still, yep. still getting amongst it, and I still feel like, 
like the like when I leave the track on a weekend, I feel like there's a there's a, a it's definitely ca- I'm definitely capable of winning that particular event. Yep. And um, yeah, I wanna I wanna I wanna finish racing and people say I think Troy was one of the best superbike riders we've had. You know, I didn't go overseas, but no as far as Australian superbike goes, um, I wanna be. Yeah, if they make a record book up, I want to. I want to be the guy that's won the most races. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I guess they. I wonder if they do have the one already. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I've yeah. never, never really known. I know Russell Colvin. Yeah, have you met Russell? Yeah, yep. Russell's a, a huge fan of the sport. He he's yep. he's one guy you need to have a chat to because he is an encyclopedia of Australian racing, and um, he's been good enough to do my my stats. Yep. And he's kept a record of them over the years, and so I know exactly. Well, he knows exactly how many races. I think I'm coming up on 100 starts or something. In the, yep. I can't remember. Yeah, but he's he um he's kept the record of it. So does he look after some of your meter stuff? He did for a long time. Yep. And he's he's just got too busy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. He's um he's yeah he does a lot of he does a lot of work on a race weekend. That guy. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. He's um. Yeah, he's a man in many places over a yeah. race weekend. So and always excitable too. Very. Yeah. <laughs> very uh, very excitable. So. Yeah. Mate, well, thank you so much. Obviously, it's a privilege to come have you have you come in, and thank you so much for being here, mate. Yeah, I really appreciate you having me. Thank it's, you. Um, I can't wait to see you. Are you allowed to say you're racing this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this comes out Friday, so um, okay, yeah, it's on this weekend. Me and Josie and Ollie awesome. and Aiden and everyone else. Yeah. You like Morgan Park, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're back. I out think of... um, Aiden and Jones and Ollie. I think it's all it's their home track too. I think, and it's not my home track, but I really love it out there. So. It should be a good weekend. So yeah, new bike, it'll be good. Ollie's in there, yeah. Mike's in there, Aiden's in there, yeah. uh, Corey Turner's in there. Sorry, Corey Turner, yeah, he's well, going really local. well. So, yeah. so yeah. yeah, he's on a 2015 bike too. Yeah. So he's going. He's, going a, he's one guy that, um, like you know someone's a good rider when they can just come and, whether he's not winning when he comes and does it, but like when they just jump on yep. and they find a way to get up the front end, pointy end, that's when you know you've got a guy that yep. can be good. Like you see guys that are out there doing it every weekend on the same bike for a few years and, they, and they're going really good and that's great too. But then when you're trying to – I think if you're, if you're looking for someone to put on a bike and you yeah. look at them guys that can just jump out – like he can jump in a sidecar, yeah. jump off it, come out and be top, top ten on a super bike. Like that's yeah. pretty, pretty hard work. After putting an engine in a sidecar all night. That's right. You know, like doing that sort of stuff yeah. too. So, and yeah. Copping, no, copping it, shit from his dad or his, his oh family. Oh, man, they give it to him. Yeah. So they are – I was I, I sat down with them um, Saturday night the last round of the the superbikes up there, yeah. and literally put it's time to put a motor in. So the family just gets yeah. around and it's like the army walks into a place. Yeah, yeah it's pretty crazy. They um, they're into yeah. it. They're addicted. Yeah. So it's good. But uh, well, mate, thank you so much. And uh, we're probably a couple of hours in. But uh, thank you, mate. And uh, yeah, catch you around. Too easy, mate. Thank you. See you, mate.